I'm planning on going for four hours. If I end up finishing two chapters in one stream, well, it means the game is shorter than I thought it would be. Which isn't a bad thing. Gives me an excuse to play something else. <laughs> a few days have passed since the incident at the clock tower. K Hospital is surprisingly empty for midday. Forgive the expression, but the place is basically dead. Oh, God damn it! From the other side of the hallway, a familiar looking man is approaching me. Is it Diamond? Next to him is a small. Oh, it isn't. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Are you also here to visit Diamond later? Yeah, pretty much. She asked me to come with her. Oh. You're wearing a dress. And you're a bit taller. For... Like, it's a... Weird crowd spurts for a little girl. After only four months, but sure, I guess it's just... Art style. She was really tiny on the first game, okay? Good afternoon. I don't make child's voice. It's girl is Suzu Moriyama. Morimiya. Though she's but a great schooler, she's also one of the mark bearers. After a previous case, she's come to idolize Eita and treat him as her older brother. She's the only reason why I think Eita might be a good person. She's the only reason. He should be grateful. Eita, why are you taking Suzu here on a weekday afternoon? She knows keeping school, right? Today is a school anniversary. Um, I heard the situation from Eita. Mr. Diamond's still asleep because of a spirit's curse, isn't he? Most likely. <clears throat> Excuse me. No way. Her eyes are filled with deep sorrow. Don't you worry, Suzu. Mr. Yashiki and I would definitely save Diamond, right? Eita proudly taps his chest while making that claim. I have no idea where that confidence comes from. Despite my skepticism, the display brings a smile back to Suzu's face. Eita, mister, can I trust you too? Only guarantee his life is... Oi! <laughs> of course. Come on. Thank you, mister. Anyway, Mr. Yashiki, I'll continue to back you up in the investigation. Eita, about that. Oops, let's save that for later. I gotta get Suzu back home. I'll go to Kuja Mansion after that. Tell me if you need anything. See you later, mister. Eita and Suzu leave after that. Crap, that was my chance to tell him. Following his leave from Kashima's case, I told Moi and Sho to stay out of the investigation. But Eita wasn't around, so I haven't told him yet. I finish my visit with Diamond, leave the hospital. Suzu... Where are you? Where are you? Oh. Morimiya Suzu desu. Eita o nii-chan no otomodachi desu. Mata minna ni aitai na. Okay. A calm girl despite her young age. She has been friends with the protagonist ever since she saved her, he saved her life in a bizarre case. She's polite and mature most of the time but also shows a childish naivety. Considers Zeta Nakamatsu her older brother and relies on him. Interest incomplete. He's still comatose, showing no signs of leaving Limbo and rejoining the ranks of the conscious. The doctors have yet to identify the root cause of his coma. If it's true the departed's curse that is behind his condition, he won't pull out of this so long as the departed still ex exists. I drive my car to Konohara Academy. A new notice hasn't been discovered yet. But Mr. Konoya asked me to teach a class in this afternoon. Oh, it's almost birthday. I got a message. I enter the classroom and ask and take my place in front of the students. Then I proceed with the class like usual. When Konoi first asked me to teach as part of my investigation, I thought it would be an absolute disaster, but surprisingly I'm doing just fine. 
On the other hand, the students seem to be doing mar markedly fine. The number of fidgeting students that can't focus on class is too large to ignore. Considering some of them also ask me about my investigation, it's obvious that what's on their minds. The reporter isn't just a fringe humor anymore. The students have gone from being amused to being terrified. The human heart is a fragile thing. Seeing these kids with a flagging spirits, I know I need to hurry up and, and close this case. It's kind of my own fault. In what feels like the blink of an eye, class is over, even then. The first time I thought, it felt like time stood still. It's kind of troubling to realize I've now been at this long enough that I'm used to it. You should become a teacher, Yashiki. After school, I started my investigation solo. I think back to my conversation with Doryu and Michio the other day. They departed might be someone close to me. In order to narrow it down, I make the rounds, asking teachers and students alike about the people involved in the incident. However, my efforts are fruitless, and all I get is a lot of small talk and wasted effort. I mean... I stop derailing. I attempt to take a different angle to figure out the party's threat trade identity and think it over. Oh, look at that. The reporter is good at hiding. Let's say they are able to take the place of someone else. And when they do, they can perfectly duplicate a person's looks, memories and personalities. It'd be the perfect disguise. Nobody could see through that. With that level of deception, the only real chance to know the true identity would be probably once they are achieved their goal which will likely be when they exchange vows with their dear husbands. And for me, that would be either the death, that would be either death or a fate worse than that. So I have to find the answer before them. Or not. I glance up and notice that it's already dark out. It's time for students to leave school. Not getting anywhere but blindly hunting down clues. I better go to the infirmary and put together a real plan of action. Skeleton! Uh, I find a woman in the white coat. Wait, oh, it's you. For a moment, I think she's a school nurse, but then I see her face. Hello. Hello, Yashiki. I never would have imagined to be a teacher here. I was really shocked when I heard the news from Diamond. Hiro, why are you here? Why are you so... Okay, you're making a sarcastic face. You're not being positive. <laughs> there we go. That's a lot better. To help you with the investigation, what else would I be doing here? I never would have imagined I heard the word help come from Hiro's mouth. There's gotta be a reason. How are you doing? She's Madoka Hiro. She wears a white coat, but it's not because she's a doctor. Hiro's a mark bearer who works at a pharma company as a researcher. If I remember correctly, they don't handle far paranormal phenomena at all, all that well. Well, true. I mean, after all this suffering was put through before, how could I be expected to like it? So why are you here then? Jeez, you're so annoying. I have my own reasons, alright? She's rather intelligent, but Hiro has also has quite a cordial streak. However, however, there are times when her curiosity gets the better of her, and she ends up poking her nose in a bizarre incident. All little test of courage, I suppose. Why are you here? To tell the truth, I'm here because Diamond asked. In the event that something were to happen to him, he asked that I come help you in his stead. Hence, I'm here, using my paid leave. I appreciate you taking an obligation to Diamond seriously, but... This case is extremely dangerous. There have been a lot of casualties. Is it Diamond? Is it Diamond, the, the, the Departed? Because Diamond was on the school before the Departed incident started. What if he's the Departed? Ah, oh, come now, don't patronize me. I'm fully aware of the dangerous presence. Then why are you? Because I want to save Diamond, simple as that. They're my friends too, not just yours. Yeah, dumbass. Diamond... Diamond apprised me of the situation. A spirit known as the Departed issues notices targeting people and then has other spirits kill them, correct? 
Yeah, it has been pretty successful. We have a number of victims already. That species have some human tendencies, huh? They behave a bit like a serial killer. Their body is different from any other spirits I've encountered so far. They're cunning and they possess the ability to pass themselves off as a human and hide within the school. I've also heard they're obsessed with you, no? You should have a strong connection with spirits, Yashiki. I guess so. I wonder if that's just another aspect of my lineage. Like the way I seem to be able to see paranormal phenomena on, other, on the other scans. Well then, shall we proceed with the investigation? Wait a minute, hero. I'm going to investigate alone. I don't want to get involved in this. Say what? You're just going to disregard my feelings. I don't get any say in the matter. Hero? Need you understand what I told you before. You aren't the only one who feels frustrated about what happened to Diamond. So you better dish that weird I'm the only one who can carry this burden of sacrifice myself mindset. It really gets on my nerves. But... I just take matters in my own hands for giving insisting I'll stay out of this. Just give it up. A triumphant smile brightens her features. I don't think I'm going to win a war uh, wits against her. Moving on to your investigation. I've heard there is no new notice. As of this moment, that is correct. I have a feeling one will arrive soon though. Let's go for the faculty room. You have a sixth sense or something? Yes, it's my job. I guess you can call it that. I have a feeling that the father wants me their dear husband to continue pursuing this case. If my hunch is right, that means they will be more likely to issue a notice while I'm here at school. When I get to the room, one of the teachers informs me that Mr. Konoe is away at the moment. Which unfortunately means I'm going to have to ask Sakamoto. Goodness gracious, you again. Sakamoto's cold tone of voice makes it apparent that she finds this meeting just un as unfortunate as I. Why is your business here? I have work to do. Has a new notice from the departed arrived? Notice. Oh, now that you mention it, I did get a report of something like that earlier. What about it? Why are you being so nonchalant for? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I believe I made my position quite clear. I find this investigation of yours to be, at best, a pointless waste of time. Sakamoto shots uh, with a withering, with withering, a withering glare in my direction. Looks like she just swallowed a bug. Huh. Convenient. She's usually pretty open about her, her dislikes of me, but she's taking it on another level today. I got a report from the dorm manager the other day. She informed me that you took Dorio and Kinokawa out and made it violate the curfew. The headmaster might have ordered me to lecture up certain behavior slides. But this is unacceptable. So, so that's why she's being particularly hostile towards me today. I didn't make those girls break curfew, but I can see how I'd be a skill that way if Sakamoto's minds in Sakamoto's minds. And I doubt my expectation would change much. Let me Hmm. Hold on. Hmm. These notices are pranks. It's mere coincidence that the students disappeared when the notices were issued. The departed ghosts, the supernatural, it's all a bunch of ludicrous nonsense. I think a man like you has suited the good name of teachers just to investigate this rubbish. Let her cook. Let her cook. Sakamoto's practically got steam coming out of her ears. I wonder what I can do to calm her down. Slap her. Slap her. Ask her to at least cooperate. I don't care if you believe in the departed or not. But I'm only here because Mr. Konoe hired me. 
and I'm trying to do the job my clients, your boss, ask me too. Can you at least cooperate? Ah. Where's the new notice? I don't have it with me. I told the students to pick it up to throw it away. You told them to do what now? Which student was it? Kakota from the disciplinary committee. He found it when patrolling the school. What does he look like? Oh, he's the big burly dude. Yeah. He's a strapping well-built boy. He's in the karate club. Yeah, he's a big burly, burly dude that was on the entrance in the beginning. Oh my, look at the time. I have to go now. I have a meeting. I have a meeting on the faculty office. Okay, I wait. I'm right here. Before I can even protest, Sakamoto's already left the room. Other teachers are following suit. Well, she's clearly not a fan of yours, Yashiki. Though you're pretty much under treatment for hitting on high school students. That's not what happened. Stop making things weird. Looks like we're going to have to put in some efforts to find this Katuka boy. Kakuta. I mean, we might stumble upon him since simply by stopping to talk to its stout students we see on the way. Would it be nice if you had a bit more information to go on? What information? Dorian Mitchell might know them. Sakamoto's are obviously going to be keeping a close eye on the, my contacts with those two, but I can't let her interfere with my work. Bleh. Bleh. Doryu is organizing documents in the student council room. Mr. Yashiki, thank you again for your help. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Do you know Kakuta? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I know him. He's in 2C. How about you try looking for him in his classroom? Got it. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Don't care about you. Bye-bye. I'm kidding. I was just like dismissed. Oh, hi. Another one who walks with their hands in the pockets. What is wrong with these people? Okay. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Hello there. I caught up a patient... I caught a painted lady in the courtyard earlier. Want to watch some butterflies together? Sorry, but I'm in a hurry right now. Do you know Kakuta? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. Oh, I saw him going to the third floor just now. What business do I have with that karate guy, though? Is the new notice targeting the karate guy or some kid or something? Hmm, the karate kid. I don't know yet, but thanks for the info. What about class 2C? 2A, 2 girls, 2A, 2B, 2B. Are you him? Maybe. Do I have a picture? Remaining man. I saw a big guy going to the back of the hallway earlier. It's probably Kakuta from second year. Wonder what he's up to. I don't care anymore. Hey, bug, where are you? Oh god, oh god. There's a big, well-built guy standing over here. He looks pretty strapping. Are you Kakuta? Who's? Yes, name is Shin Shinichi Kakuta. Where's the party's notice? I hope you haven't thrown it away already. No, I still have it. I still have it. Ms. Sakamoto told me to trash it, but... I felt like I should show it to you since you're investigating them. Thanks a lot. God, <laughs> you should thank Doryu and Kirokawa. They've been asking everyone to pitch in and help you out. Quite a good guy. If that's it, I'll be heading to my classroom. Feel free to come to 2C if you still did anything. I'll be at school for a while. Kakuta then walks off. I quickly scan the new notice. It has all the red marks of the previous notice, and according to the folded piece of paper, we did the handprints. An accordion folded piece of paper, the handprints, okay. 
So this is what I know this looks like, huh? Ah, it's really giving off horror vibes. Hurry up and check it out. Come on. Dear Hooligan. Kokuri, Kokuri. Kokuri? The name looks familiar. Is it like... Is it like a little kid that walks around hopping in one feet? Like has a, like a little a sack on top of his head and he wields a sickle or a scythe or a sword or a blade or something. I'm watching, I'm watching hiding in school. Your beloved, the, the depraved, the departed. Hooligan. Hmm. The next victim is Hooligan and the spirit is Kokuri. So by hooligan, they mean those barish duck types, right? Yeah, so fa- So I think we should try and gather information that would lead us to the identity of those two things. Asking the remaining students will probably be more fruitful than asking the teachers. The faculty doesn't seem to co so cooperative. Yeah, on the- Maybe that student council girl will tell you. I mean, she actually appears to be trying to help you. Also, I'd like to hear more from, Kakuta, from the Kakuta kid. Yeah. Let's switch you. Yeah, come on. Give me more to work with that with than that. This operation here, don't make me handle everything alone. Oh, okay. As much as I want to point out that she's cut me off every time I try to speak, I hold my tongue. Besides, Hero's plan of attack is basically what I would have suggested. We better start asking around the hooligan and Kokuri. Shinshi Kakuta. Hello. Did you find Kakuta? Yes, thanks to you. I'm happy that I could help. So what do you want to talk about? Actually, we found a new notice. Well, so another one's finally here, huh? Show me. I show me to the departed's notice. So the next spirit is Kokuri. Well, Kokuri usually refers to that old fortune telling technique, but I'm sure you already know about that, right? I... no, I made another assumption completely different to that, but... Let me explain it to you then. Kokuri is a fortune telling technique that uses a coin and a piece of paper. Ah, uh, oh! Right, okay. You summon a spirit named Kokuri and ask them some questions. It can be dangerous since you're dealing with the spirits after all. There are some people who get a bit scared out of it. But the Kokuri mentioned in the notice is a ghost, not the fortune telling technique. So Kokuri is both the name of the technique and the summon spirits, and the rumor is referring to the spirits. Can you tell me more about it, Micho? Sure, why not? That reminds me. Hime and I were called by Miss Sakamoto this afternoon. Do you know what she said? Don't get too close to Mr. Yashiki, he doesn't belong here. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, sorry, I shouldn't have talked to you. She's probably gonna give you a lecture. Ah, don't worry about it. You're my lifesaver and you're hunting down the departed like I am. So about the Kokuri in the notice. I have a feeling it might be referring to Mr. Kokuri. Kokuri-san. Hmm. There's a rumor like that at Konohara Academy. Kokuri Ojisan. Okay. Yay! Have you ever gone to the corridor on the second floor? Of course not. The place is restricted. You know why? It's because of the Kokuri Shrine. That place is cursed. And not lying is the truth. Even heard stories about it. Whoa, look at that. One rainy day, some delinquents were hanging out on the school's floor corridor. Second floor's corridor. They were kinda notorious. They were getting in fights on a daily basis. There were even rumors that they were into drugs. I guess they must have been bored. So they were messing around with the shrine as a dare, all laughing with the stupid faces. 
They were kicking the shrine and scribbling on it. All sorts of things. One of them even put on a cigarette on. Oh, come on. The winds and rain got stronger. The delinquents were about to head back inside. At that moment, they heard a voice mixing with the winds. They turned toward the old shrine, the source of the voice, figuring out someone must have playing a, been playing a prank on them. Except they were the only ones in the corridor. Obviously, they thought they were just imagining things. Those delinquents looked at each other and ran away from the corridor as fast as they could. But that night... One of the delinquents, the one who snuffed out the cigarettes on the shrine, had a pain in his ear. He felt a strange sensation when he touched his ear. It was dry and rough. It was weird, like there was something in his ear. Terrified, he went to check himself in the mirror. Mushrooms were growing on his ear. Other cap mushrooms that look like maitake. The mushrooms continue to spread. From his ear to his neck, his cheeks, then his chin. The delinquent shrieked, and then... He called an ambulance. He got himself checked at the hospital. They found no trace of mushrooms, but his ear had a really bad infection. His skin was rotting away. Oh! Actually scared me. <laughs> so they had to cut his ear off. When a teacher heard his story, they said it's the curse of Kokuri Shrine. That voice must have been Mr. Kokuri's, and that was his work. The rumors say Mr. Kokuri is the apparition of a priest who haunts the shrine. Quite a snake motive, though. And that was the rumor about Mr. Kokuri. So please stay away from the shrine in the second floor's corridor. If you're cursed by the mushrooms, your lovely face will be ruined. Is Mr. Kokuri the name of the shrine? Correct. It's called Mr. Kokri because the shrine has a mysterious voice. No one knows about Mr. Kokri, what Mr. Kokri looks like, as they only heard his voice. Creepy, isn't it? Hooligan? Mm, I can't think of anyone. Maybe he isn't me, I guess, but he's dead already. By the way, Mr. Yashki. I never seen a person beside you. Is she a doctor, like Mr. Diamond? I'm a researcher, not a doctor. But I do also deal with the health of living beings as a part of my job. Oh, I see. And I don't a female scientist, huh? You should have some amazing and gorgeous assistants. By the way, which one do you prefer? They're both dependable on their own ways. I has the stamina, hero has the intelligence. That's not what I mean. Oh well, I was stupid of me to expect something. Ha, you two sure are close. This girl might be the departed, you know. Shush, hero. Oh, I don't mind, as long as Mr. Yashki trusts me. Sorry, it's a joke. I got of an edge since we don't have any idea who the departed might be. I don't mind. It's kind of a situation. It's natural to have some suspicions. In this kind of situation, blah blah blah. Okay. I miss my normal school life. Hey, Ashki. Shouldn't you be able to pretty much guess who the hooligan may be? Based on what Mitchell told me about the Mr. Kokori rumors. And the delinquent students? I agree with you there, but I still have no clue who, my, who it might be. Rumors said a delinquent student was cursed by the shrine in the second floor corridor. Why don't we go take a look there? Wait, are you serious? Aren't you being to Cavalier here? 
You're going to be stepping into some deep shit if you approach the shrine. I'm not doing it for entertainment, it's for investigation. You can stay here if you don't want to go. I never said I didn't want to go. I just wonder if there was a better way to do this. But that's it, I'm not scared at all. Let's go then. Oh, there was... Uh, what is to see? Here it is. There you are. I forgot you were big. Hello, Mr. Ashki. Did you still need anything from me? I've actually read the notice. A spirit named Kokuri is going to kill Hooligan tonight, right? Well... Mr. Konami, Konami told me not to discuss the incident with the students out of consideration for the mental well-being. I can't just give him a, dis a dismissive reply though. No need to hide it, the rumors have, have spread. Using me the pianist and Horikoshi the model have been killed just as the notice said anyway. And the one who killed them was a spirit named The Departed, right? They are hiding in the school right now. If rumors of the incidents have already spread to this extent, I'm not, going, I'm not doing any favors by keeping my mouth shut. I doubt that these rumors have been purposely spread by any other targets. By anyone tar target. Mm. The students believe in the departed. They're connecting the dots and spreading the rumors on their own. The wicked students must be try and tired of living in fear. I guess they're scared of the idea that the person next to them might be the departed. Are you not scared, Kakuta? Me? Scared? <laughs> no way. If a spirit dares to show itself to me, I just go to work with his fists. Nah, uh, good luck with that. That is the person mentioned in the notice, right? I have an idea who it might be. Mm, if we were talking about hooligans at the school, I could only think of the delinquents. Oh, excuse me. Those punks keep ignoring the school rules and it's really pissing me off. Kakta's on the disciplinary committee, so it's not surprising that the behavior of some punks is getting all riled up. Because I don't really understand spirits, how about asking Kinoka from the student council? She seems to have a lot about this kind of stuff. To know a lot. Okay, the delinquents. Can I uh, go this way now? A final door leading to the emergency exit. Cabbage worms are cute. Okay. Uh, why do I go from here then? Oh yeah, I can ask. Um, I got it. We're going to the shrine in the second floor's corridor, aren't we? Oh, you mean here? Second floor's corridor should be just ahead. There's a crop of paper in the gap between the doors. Warning, the second floor corridor is off limits. Shrine where people supposedly heard Mr. Kokuri's voice should be right ahead. Looks like the door's unlocked. Let's check the place out. Now loading. Don't run. Hello? Who might this be? Oh god. A thane so ostentiously style girl is absently lingering near the shrine. Um. Hello there. <coughs> Where she is? Something. Her replies are intelligible, more of a grown. Just ignore her, Yashki. Something's wrong with her. Mm. You do you then. Hmm. An old shrine is standing here. Sorry for the whistle. This has gotta be the shrine from the rumors about Mr. Kokuri. Let's take a closer look. No inspect. 
the first thing that stands out is that it's a rather small shrine. It's completely we weathered after being exposed to the elements for a long period. Another noticeable feature is the number of talismans on it. The image of the talisman looks like a centipede. There's a small gap in the shrine door. It's too dark to tell what's inside though. We need to open the door first if we want to see what's inside. Well, let's go die then. We reach towards the door to check out what's inside. Old man. The female student next to me groans and slowly forces out some words. Don't do anything bad to the shrine. Okay. Uh, old man. You're... He's gonna punch me? Oh god. Growling, the female student launches an attack. With a terrifying look in her eyes, the female student raises something resembling a baton. She sees something that looks like mushrooms around her neck. Maybe she's possessed. Uh, the... Bag? Take the attack, attack. We attack, attack. Ah. It's just a baton. I use my bag as a shield and try to reflect her attacks. I blocked her attack with my bag. I did it. Great. The female student flinches for a moment. I should be able to restrain her now. However, she regains her balance before I can make my move. Then she swings her baton and launches another attack. I'm struggling so much to repel her attacks about myself. If I want to make any progress, I need a different course of action. Really? We try to use my bag as a shield. Okay. We clutch the bag tightly and block her attack. Nice. Female student recoils. Grab it, Hiro. Okay. Calm down. Hiro captures the student's arms from behind. Hopping out, they immediately restrain her. The student lets out a yell, but then goes quiet. Looks like it was the right choice. The student faints and the emotions on her neck instantly vanishes. So it really was a spiritual phenomena. As some of the rest of the rumors is accurate, that wouldn't mean the mushrooms by the shrine's curse. Keep an eye on our hero. And investigate the, uh, the inside of the shrine. A short thing. I walk towards the shrine and put my hand on the door. There's a talisman on it. Inside the shrine, I find some bizarre stuff. A petri dish used for experiments. Inside the dish is a dead centipede. Some red substance appears to be growing from the centipede. What in the world is this? It's a fungi. Oh, I see I found something interesting. Those red filaments are probably mushrooms. It's difficult to tell which without the caps. Without me realizing it, Hero's already peering over my shoulder. Looks like those are mushrooms. High fear growing. Mushroom high fee. Okay. Hi hi hypea? Hmm. Growing the dead centipede. And the what? Ophiocordyceps sinensis. Can I ask for the mating name? 
What is he doing here? Old shrines aren't usually a place where you store lab equipment. What am I going to do with the petri dish? Where are you gonna keep it? I guess so, yeah. You're just gonna take it. Pressed by Hero, whose eyes are sparkling with curiosity, I collect the petri dish. What are we gonna do with her? It doesn't seem like she's going to regain consciousness anytime soon. We can just leave her here. Let's take her to the, back to the infirmary. I hoist the female students on my, onto my back and leave the corridor. From there, I walk straight to the infirmary. I cross the whole school, to the front door, to the side door, to the courtyard, into the new building, and drop her on the bed. The smell of cigarette smoke assaults my nose the moment I enter. It's my boyfriend! <laughs> I finally back. I've been waiting. Inside, I see a sharp dying man tossing his cigarettes into a portable trash tray. Why are you smoking in the infirmary? Master. Ah, the smell of cigarettes. Hey, no smoke inside the school. There are kids here. You're a terrible influence, you know. Where's your common sense, master? Oh, is that how it is? Back in my day, the teachers would openly smoke in the faculty room. Well, times have changed. We don't have fossils in the school anymore. They have in a museum. You need to be more considerate. Ah, what a pain. Anyway, who's that kid in your back? Let me lay her down first, then we can talk. I put the unconscious girl down on the bed. She's totally out of it. Guess I just have to leave her here for the moment. Alright. Can you give me the details now? I don't exactly expect to reunite with your friend and fight and carry an unconscious girl on the back. Fine, I got some questions to ask too. Satoru Mashita, a mark bearer, a former detective who's now working as a private investigator. He's not really all that knowledgeable about the spirits and paranormal phenomena. But after the events of a shared past, he often enjoys me when I'm on spiritually related cases. Never would expect to come to a place like this, even on an investigation. You mean a school that's in session? Yeah. A place full of brats looks something like nothing but trouble to me. And I got scolded just for having a freaking smoke. Sneaking into my abandoned school is made easier. Let me just make one thing clear, Master. I'm begging you, please try not to attract any unwanted attention. I'm no guarantee isn't that one, Pa. So gotta do things my way. If anyone's got a problem with that, they just have to deal with it. He got one of his mouth twitches in a grin. Master's a man who will do anything for his investigation. Mr. Kono and Sakamoto would not appreciate his presence or methods. But his eccentric methods have a way of grading the truth, dragging the truth, out of situations where a more civilized approach would fail. Why are you here? Have you finished your job, Master? Yeah, can't tell you much about it though, since he's, I'm under NDA. And just when I thought I'd be able to relax for a bit, you chose to be here. That hag Yasuoka asked me to help you out. She's a real slave driver. His man is different from the other mark bearers. Because of his job, he's a seasoned veteran when it comes to cases involving dangerous and bizarre spirits. If he's offering to help, I'll drop on it. His help makes it that much more likely that Hero and the Departed's targets will survive. Sorry for causing you trouble. Save your thanks for the old bag. I'm just here to work. Yasuoka gave me a summary of the case. A spirit masquerading as a student, huh? Wonder how their grades are. He's cracking jokes, but his eyes shows no trace of a smile. Under the surface, he must be just as tense as we are. Wanna know what I think? You're basically being jerked around by the departed's notices. Are those spirits from the notices, and you're still no closer to figure out who the departed are who the departed is? Maybe you're right. But if I just ignore the notices, someone's going to die. Ha, ah, then what's your plan? Just gonna keep dancing on the tune until they get bored and quit. 
that's... Don't get sidetracked to forget your original goal, Yashiki. The only way you can solve this case is to find that the body is hiding in the school. And what you should do is start looking at everyone around you as potential suspects. Already doing that. By the way, Yashiki. Ashma jerks his head over his direction. Over the direction of the girl on the bed. Tell me about her. How long are you gonna make me wait? I shared everything I've learned about Mr. Kokuri and the hooligan and the events at the shrine. Ha, huh, so these kids attack you. School violence is kind of a lost art these days. What a special moment to your teacher career, huh, Mr. Yashiki? Cut it out with that. Can you say that makes my skin crawl? No matter how you choose to look at it, this kid isn't normal. She got those hooligans and had mushrooms growing along her neck. Right, considering that. Maybe she was possessed by Kokuri. Oh yeah, that. Oh... Don't catch me by surprise, I can just block it now. I recall the time Micho was possessed by Sleeve Mount Kashima. She was fully under the control of the spirits, led by their desires. The student might have been the same as her. What's this kid anyway? She doesn't have a student handbook and no matter how much we shake her, she does not show any signs of waking up. Waiting for her to wake up such a waste, just, bleh, such a waste of time. Let's just ask someone else about her. She'll be able to find someone who knows where she is pretty quickly. She's obviously trying to stand out. Let's ask around about the petri dish too, while we at it. Who knows? Maybe we can learn who placed this inside the shrine. We're just gonna show the things to the students. They're gonna start talking about me. Yeah. Ha, too late to worry about the reputation. You already tricked two female students in breaking the curfew. I don't care if you get out chummy with those brats for the investigation, but you better not do something weird that ends up blowing back on me onto me, Yashki. Give me a break, you two. See, your friends. Everything gets better when you have your friends behind you. I really hope this put a stop to this topic. I'll have however I don't... I'll have however I... I'll have however... I don't bring with me... Uh, what? What is the sentence? I'll have however I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the cautious go. Oh, I have however I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the cautious go while I resume the investigation. It lacks a comma. I'll have however I don't bring with me. I'll have comma. However I don't bring with me comma. Keep an eye on the unconscious go while I resume the investigation. It's what happens when you start doing a translation course to become grammar police. Let's see if anyone at the school can tell me about this girl on the petri dish. Carta Setoro Master has been added to the character file. Nice. Do I still have uh, the girl with me? Maybe. Did you find Kakuta? Yes, along with the new notice. So there is another new notice. Mind showing me? I showed Dorio the departed's notice. So they're in treating, threatening to kill someone again. It is my job to prevent that from, to prevent that from happening. Ugh. Let me fix myself. Mm -mm. Okay. If you got any information that could help, please let me know. Sure. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I have an idea who she is. It might be one of the first years, Saki Maruhashi. What's she like? I don't know her personally, but some of the first year council members were telling me some things. 
They say that she never had any friends and is always on her own. She got a bad rap because of it. There's nobody to defend her. There are all kinds of rumors surrounding her, saying she likes to go out at night, drink and smoke, and she's associated with a biker gang. This may be rumors, but they are true. That makes Saki Maruha Maruhashi a, a kid worthy of the name Hooligan. Mm -hmm. Ah, what is that? A dead centipede and what are those red things? They're actually mushrooms. Do you know anything about this petri dish? Not at all. I don't know anything at all about it. Mr. Yashki, can you please keep it away from me? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Do you breathe a huge sigh of relief when I put a petri dish back in my bag? The reaction is totally normal. Hiro and I have just become so desensitized to the sort of creepy things that we forget how normal people feel them. Hooligan, huh? Compared to the model and pianist, this one's got a lot more room for interpretation. Fighting the target might not be so easy. I don't really know much about spirits. You should ask Bicho instead. Okay. That reminds me, I've been wondering about this for a little bit now. I realized that you started calling Michio by her first name. Um, mind telling me why? I had a feeling this would come up, actually. I tell Dorio about how Michio forced me to call her by her first name if I wanted her to cooperate. I figured. I couldn't imagine someone as serious as you just deciding to be casual with your, with your students. Bring up a good point. What do you think? Should I go back to calling her by her last name? Uh, no, don't do that. Michiho will hate me. Hmm? Why would she? Why would she? Uh... She's trying to get along with you in her own way. So I don't want to interfere with, with her wishes like that. Alright. Hmm. I finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room. Hmm. Hmm. I was just thinking about insects. Okay, same thing. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I've seen her before, but I don't know her name. I'm not a delinquent after all, as far as I know. I take out the creepy petri dish and show it to Michio. Our oh, Chinese redhead. Call up, oh, yes. Did you know, even though the name centipede means 100 foot, there aren't too many centipedes that actually have 100 feet. I think, like, only a few soil centipedes have that many feet. Seizing the opportunity to talk about insects, Micho immediately begins flexing her knowledge about centipedes. She doesn't even have a reaction to the terrible sights inside the dish. And I appreciate the centipede lesson, but what about the mushrooms? Ah, so these red things are mushrooms. No clue. It's beyond my scope of knowledge. Oh, I see. Thanks. Judging by that reaction, Micho won't be able to tell us anything useful about the petri dish. Don't pay any attention to what Smith Sakamoto said. Him and I are your eyes. Okay. Talk to Kakuta. Ka ka kakuta. Ah, that's the wrong. Oh. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. This didn't need anything from me. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. Yeah, I know her. She's always hanging out in the co connecting corridor. She keeps going on there even though I've warned her so many times. This is why I hate delinquents, they're stupid. Do you know anything else? Nothing in particular. I don't really care to know about delinquents. If she wasn't a girl, I would have punched her right in the face. Hey now, aren't you in the karate club? Male, female, students wouldn't shouldn't fight with each other. Ha, <laughs> I'm just joking. Martial arts should be used to train your minds and your body, not hurt others. Okay. 
Look at this centipede. Isn't it creepy on the way that it is? What? The moment he sees the dish, his eyes bulge. A strong cup there. Um, it's just. Uh, my apologies. It's so disgusting. I don't even know what to say. Centipedes alone are already gross, but the mushrooms just make it much. You know, it's mushrooms. Where did you find it? Is the science room? No, I was inside the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor. Uh, what was he doing there? I have no idea either. I thought it was a prank. Oh. I have to get back to patrolling. So, but I gotta end the chat here. Kakuta bids us farewell and quickly leaves the classroom. Hey, Yashiki. Something's off with that brave statement. You must have noticed it too. What's off about Kakuta's statement? Well, he said about the mushrooms. It's the mushrooms. When I first saw the petri dish, I didn't even realize they were mushrooms. But Kakuta noticed that right away. That's a bit strange. Correct. See your brain's working just fine. He may know where the mushrooms came from. Let's beat Kakuta again. He should, he should still be at school. Let's go find him. Uh, this is taking long, 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 long time. Huh? Kakuta. He's not here. Well, that was easy. Cabbage. I know, cabbage. By the way, Mr. Yashiki, I bumped into the Karate Man earlier. Like, literally, he bumped right into me. But he didn't even apologize, I went straight up st Oh, God! 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 I'll become a monster. Kakuta? It's not you. Liar. But he didn't even apologize, I went straight upstairs. So he's here. Somewhere. And this guy's lying to me. He's in the bathroom. Science room. A pile of cases used for carrying equipment. I shake it lightly, but it doesn't seem that anything inside. Hmm. A large shelf with a glass door, test tubes and tripods are stored inside. For some reason, there are a number of dead insects stuck to the door. You can get repl replicable results when you have contamination receptacles. It's like this in every school. Hmm. A large shelf with a glass door. Okay, same thing. What the hell? Hello. Kakuta is inside the storage room. Several documents are scattered on the floor below him. Looks as if the room has been ransacked. Uh, Mr. Yashiki. I didn't do this. The room was already a mess when I came in. Please, you gotta believe me. Just tell me what happened here first, Kakuta. Uh, yes. When I was patrolling the school, I saw someone coming out of the science room. They seemed kind of suspicious, so I decided to check it out. The room looked the same as it always does, but... I unlocked the storage room here to have a look just in case. That's when I found this mess. That's what you're saying happens. Yes, that's what really happens. Damn, I could have called the culprit for just coming sooner. Kakuta's eyes dart every which way as he's trying to spin his tail. My gut tells me that he's hiding something. I press him for more details. I saw something coming out of the room, right? What did it look like? A delinquent boy with brown hair. He was running at full speed, so I couldn't get a good look at his face. Why didn't you chase him? I didn't know what I should do. You, had a, you literally just said you're gonna punch a lady. For absolutely existing and that's about it 
At that time, I had no idea I'd been poking around the storage room. But it was locked. You just said it was locked. Is anything missing from the science room? Um, I don't think so. But I'm not totally sure since I don't often come here. My apologies. Did you check if there was any shadows? Someone might be hiding in there. I checked over every room, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. That's why I decided to enter the storage room. The storage room was locked, right? Yes, so I unlocked it. Since I'm on patrol, I have the keys with me. Is it easy to borrow the keys? Ah, not at all. Who knows what those delinquents would do if they had the keys? Only trustworthy students like me, someone on the disciplinary committee, would be able to borrow the keys. As I need to hear from Kakuta. Of the three pieces of information he gave me, two of them are inconsistent. He may give himself away if he pointed out. Let's put his feet on fire, shall we? The delinquent, the science room and the key, the delinquent and the science room, the delinquent and the key. He said he saw a delinquent student. Yeah, that's right. He said it was locked when he came in, which means the perpetrator locked it behind himself. But he also said the key is under tight control and that he never been let to untrustworthy delinquent kids. Just wondering if you could explain that to me. Uh, it was a stolen spare key. Those delinquents, they have no shame. What is this guy capable of? Well, I suppose we can always go check if the spare key has been stolen or not. Except I got an alternate story. Kakuta, you broke into the room using the key you're holding. Ugh. I have no idea why you did that, but... You started acting weird after I showed this to you. Do you know anything about these mushrooms? I don't really know the details. I was just told to do this. By who? That's... The sound of a phone vibrating echoes in the room. Kakuta takes out his phone. He then stares at the screen, his eyes wide in intense concentration. Oh. I was summons. I have to go. Or else I'll be killed. Killed? Who told you they're going to kill you? Kakuta runs out of the storage room, screaming at the top of his lungs. Wait! I dashed after Kakuta with Mashta following a heart on my heels. When I saw him running away like that, my mind immediately flashed back to Naomi Horikoshi, who ran away from us right before she met a tragic fate. I'm determined to prevent history from repeating itself. But... My stamina fills me midway through the chase, and Kakuta, who is, I forgot, is actually a karate, karate a part of the karate club, manages to disappear into the distance. Ah, the heck is with that brat's stamina? Never even gain ground on him. He must be some kind of monster. I agree with Mashta. His physical prowess certainly seems like it's beyond that of a typical high school student. Almost as if he's being possessed by a spirit. Fine then. Let's go back to the science room. I'm curious what Kakuta was trying to do. Yeah. Oh. Sorry about that. We return to the science room storage room. My whole body feels as heavy as lead, both physically from fatigue and mentally from the looming sense of powerlessness. I'm starting to feel like I'm pretty stuck in a spider's web, struggling pointlessly while the departed exerts total control over me. Does this struggle have any purpose? Can I even save a single person? Ah, don't give me that hand down, look. Just focus on moving this investigation forward, don't think about anything else. 
I can handle that, staying hit the roads. Hero and I can handle the rest. No, I'm fine. Mas that's right. We need to act, not mope. Let's inspect the storage room. We need to figure out why Kakuta broke into this place. Bear! 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 He's a fine stuffed bear. It's not uncommon for schools to have stuffed animals, but a stuffed bear? That's unusual. I'm drawn to it. We see something glowing in his mouth. Is it a tooth? I put my hand on his mouth, but I can't feel it all the way inside. What in the world are you doing? Um, there's something inside, but I can't reach it since my hands doesn't fit. Well then, I won't be able to do it either. We need to find someone with a slimmer hands, or just rip the bears open. Don't do that. If we do something like that, we'll definitely call and want attention to us. Master and I aren't going to be able to get the object out. We need someone with slender hands to get it out. Okay. I'm getting deja vu for some reason. Bear! 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 Why are you staring at the stuffed bear, Yashki? Oh, there's something inside, but my hands are too big to fit all the way in. You want me to give it a try then? I didn't mean it that way, but would you mind trying it for me? To be honest, I don't really want to do it, since it looks like there's sweet bugs in there, but I guess I have no choice. Hiro timidly puts her hand into the bear's mouth, with a gloomy expression on her face. Nah, just a little bit more. Nice, I got it. Here you go. It's a tooth. On the middle of the day like this. Kakuta was rummaging through the shelf until a bit ago. The door is wide open and the documents are all scattered. It's mm -hmm. a cochlea. There's a large spiral shelf fossil inside the shelf. It is an ammonite. Its distinctive shape looks pretty artistic for something natural. It's a hidden god. Long forgotten by the annals of history, only remembered by some who remember the events. The events of the Hiddix. There are several documents on the floor. This must be Kakuta's doing. I pick one of the documents and look at the cover. There is a label with a caption written on it. Research on native plants that grow around Konohara Academy. There are two dates written on the title, one from 11 years ago and another from 9 years ago. Did this research spawn two years? Maybe. I find a preface, a preface on the next page. The fox forest behind the school seems to have a special environment. A variety of plants native to the area can be seen here. As a science teacher at Konoyahar Academy, I set out to catalog all of them. Following the preface page, there's a summary of the research done on various plants. There are photos of plants at Moss, complete with a detailed information Information. It's thorough. They are a surprisingly easy read. It's clear that the author is both a fine writer and an educator. Why didn't that? The page between Fox as a lay and Foxtail Fern has been torn out. I skim through the end, but I don't find anything about the red mushroom. Maybe what you're looking for is on the top page. Most likely. Kakuta must have done this. I bet it's why he's knocking here. How would he do that though? If he got caught, he could be dispelled. So you're saying that mushroom data would have been worth at that risk for him? Guess that it was. I could have imagined what information would be important though. If we can find the last page, we may get a step closer to understanding Kakuta's motives. Should we report this to the school, Yashki? No, we shouldn't. Get back Kakuta into a corner if we did. We can always decide to turn him on later once we are heard his side of the story. Um What's next, Yashki? You tell me. Ah, Mr. Yashki, finally! 
Abbe showed up earlier and left me a message. Seekers of wisdom, I shall wait you in the garden of knowledge. What does that even mean? Don't ask me, I got no clue either. Well, that's all. See you later. Having finished her business with us, Michio strolls off. Introduction to this chapter is enormous. There is no one inside the- what? Or so I thought. After a beat, a boy suddenly emerges from behind the bookshelves. Welcome to the Garden of Knowledge, Mr. Yashiki. Seeing that you're here, that must mean you're in need of assistance from the sage, aka me. You're the one who called me here. Goodness, so you haven't realized it yet. My left eye said you wanted my wisdom. Hence why I told you what I was in advance. Consider this my being generous and proactively providing you service. I can't follow his line of thinking at all. One thing for certain, he's being nice to me today. Maybe he's in a good mood or something. This is a good chance to get some information out of him. Let's play along. I didn't realize that your clairvoyance led you see so far ahead. You're really are incredible. Just as you mentioned, there was something I wanted to ask you. That's right. Ask away, I'm listening. Mm hmm. You seem to be in a good mood today. What's got you feeling so upbeat? What fine perception. I expected no less from the one and only spirit doctor. I will be meeting my mentor for the first time in a while today. So there's the reason to turn on this way. I mean, I did a person who got you interested in paranormal phenomena. <laughs> Correct. My great master taught me the truth of the world. They made me the man I am today. I stick up the air. I stick up the up. Oh. I, I, I stick up your ass. I stick in the mud. Sure. They're the reason why Eva has developed such an interesting personality. They just wrapped his mind and completely ruined the kids. This kid. You hate to see it. Please wait, Mr. Yashki. I shall share information regarding the departed's case on one condition. That condition being, you must complete my trial. God, it's gonna keep going. What trial? I want to see your true abilities as a spirit doctor. Be it your spiritual state or power. Be it your spiritual state or power. Show me everything. I'm busy with my investigation, though. It will take but a moment of your time. Are you ready? Fine. Now allow me to explain the trial. I have three talismans with me. Take them and get a good look. Each talisman has a symbol on it. Are you going to do that shit to me? Are you kidding? Uh, menu. Three talismans belonging to Abe. The symbols triangle, square and star are drawn on the talismans. I am going to envision one symbol in my head. I'm sure I already know what you should do, right? You immediately need to read my mind with the supernatural powers and state the symbol I'm picturing. The heck? Why did you hit your head did you hit your head or something? Hmm. The prattling of outside is not necessary for this trial. This is my trial for it, Mr. Ashki. But I'm not a psychic, let alone someone with spiritual powers. Humbling yourself, I see. I've selected a symbol, now demonstrate your powers to me. Abe starts mumbling something as if he's meditating. Are you kidding me? Simon is what they call a pentagram in divination, which would be a star. But he might be trying to throw me off, and the correct answer would be triangle or square. Do I need to give a correct answer though? Look at this bug! I pick up the petri dish, open the lid and try to throw it on Abby's face. The hideous centipede can be seen clearly the moment I open the lid. Now that I think about it, Abby really hates bugs. 
Play time is over, Abe. Get a look at this. I present the pit dish to Abe, making sure the sand pit inside is impossible to ignore. <laughs> there we go. The sand pit! Get it away from me, please. Are you going to give me information then? That's unfair, Mr. Yashiki. This is your punishment for disrespecting adults and wasting your time, your brat. What are you gonna do now? Fine, I lose. Get a picture dish away from me now. It's like the right choice. It's the only choice. Teenage torture content. It's what I'm here for. I've learned a lot. So this is how we exterminate spirits. You observe them and make and then strike at their weakness. How incredible, spirit doctor. I fulfill my end of the bargain, Abby. Time for you to spill everything you know. I understood. I let you know that a new notice has arrived and asking about Mr. Kokuri. So this time it's Mr. Kokuri. I know him, obviously. A spirit that haunts the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor as well as the fox forest. Is it not? Oh, that's new. Forest? That's news to me. Goodness me. The spirit doctor didn't even know that trivial bit of information. I guess it gave me no choice. Allow me to tell you the rumors I've, I have learned. Oh, the accordions. This was a well-known rumor that spread around 10 years ago. There's an old shrine gate in the north corner of the school grounds. Beyond the gate lies a path leading to the forest. He said he appears there at night. What the hell? It's a guy with a gun. A man clad in a white garb and a fox mask. He is Mr. Kokuri. He has dubbed Kokuri because of the mask. As I'm sure you know, the ritual used to speak with the dead Kokuri summons a part fox spirit. I believe he has given the name by someone who knew he was a fox spirit. It's said Mr. Kokuri used to be a priest of the shrine in the forest. In his past life, he patrolled the path and performed ritual cleansings to keep the shrine free of negative energies. He continues his routine even after death. He will never forgive anyone who disgraces the shrine. Should he find one? American style. <laughs> he will shoot that scoundrel right in the head. That is the Mr. Kokri I know. What the hell? That's not a Japanese ghost, it's just a complete psychopath. Thank you for allowing me to impart my wisdom. That's different from the rumor I heard. There are two rumors of Mr. Kokuri after all. The Fox Forest rumor predates the one about for about two second floor shrine. Bah, predates the one about the second floor shrine. Perhaps details have changed over time through, through the pretending of the rumor. How did you go from, from a guy with a gun to a ghost? Or, what if body rumors are actually true and none of the details have been changed at all? What if Mr. Kokuri actually shows up both in the forest and the corridor? If you have a gun, why curse? If you can curse, why gun? Interesting. Unfortunately, the Mr. Kokuri on the corridor is completely different from the one in the forest. In tears of period, place, and the curses they wield. Do you still think they are the same? I think they're the same, yeah. So you still believe they're the same spirits, despite all the notable differences? Is this the sixth sense of the spirit doctor? My, I've witnessed something nice today. Witnessed. Witnesses. What do you think, Abe? I have no idea. A definitive conclusion would require more information. Should we assume both rumors are true though, that means the two spirits are connected. Is there anything that leads you to that conclusion? More or less. The priest that became Mr. Kokri is said to have traveled the forest path in his path past life. That path connects two shrines. The first one is a shrine in the forest, and the one one is Kokuri's shrine on the second floor. 
You see, that shrine was originally on the grounds. Kokori appears in both shrines because they are connected. Is that what you think? Sorry for the whistle. I just heard it from my, my earbuds. I, I whistled super hard. I didn't notice. Precisely. True shrines and true rumors related to Kokori. What could this mean? Holy Gana. A person who's a far cry from the upstanding citizen I am. Haven't the faintest idea who that might be. Describe the girl who attacked me and ask if he knows her. I am not familiar with such an individual. My left eye refuses to even see those of low spiritual states. I take the creepy dish. Creepy the petri dish. Stop it, guys! Too much! I quickly return the petri dish to my bag in light of Abbe's feelings. Do it again, do it again! Mr. Yashiki, would you mind not tormenting me? But it's so fun. My master, okay. All of this is obtained through my own independent investigation, using my own skills and efforts. Remember that. All right, goodbye. After I finish talking with Abe, I leave the library. Library, library, library. Hero's phone is vibrating. Excuse me for a moment. Hiro answers the phone and begins to speak. Judging from the parts of the investigation I can hear, it seems like Mashta's on the other end of the call. Mashta said that girl has regained consciousness. Or in his words, I didn't come here to deal with brats. Get our asses back here now. Shall we head to the infirmary? It's almost time for students to leave school anyway. Can I leave to talk until you, Ashki? You're the faculty member here, after all. I'm not super confident, but I'll give it a shot. I find the link with the girl and match just glaring at each other even when I arrive at the infirmary. Ugh, about in time we got here. Lord is proud of what happens, though I'm not sure if she's actually understood anything. Seeing as how she wasn't spoken of damn words, do something about it, Yashki. So this situation falls to me. Once I'm ready, once I'm ready, I should talk to the delinquent girl. Ah, actually, let, never, never mind. Let's continue. After taking a deep breath and organizing my thoughts, I approached the girl and talked to her. Glad to see you regain consciousness. Your name is Saki Maruhashi, right? The name is Yashki. I'm a temporary teacher here. Have you heard anything about me? I'm currently investigating the departed case. How do I put this? Do you remember attacking me with a baton? This isn't going well. It's not answering at all. A chime sounds, signaling the clo signa signaling, yeah, closing the closing of the school for the day. I'm going. Marahashi starts walking towards the exit. Oh, wait, there's something I want to ask you. At that moment, someone else enters the infirmary. Hello, you're yeah, Yasuka. Good afternoon. This is quite lively here, isn't it? Yasuoka. Hmm. My, it's been a while since we last saw each other. The beguiling kimono clad woman is Toako Yasuoka. She's another mark bearer and also renowned fortune teller. She's also quite famous as a spiritualist and has helped me a lot. The sacred objects Moe brought to school are actually hers. What brings you here? Well, I'm here to help you out, obviously. Diamond and Moe have been keeping me phones about your case. I see you've gone and gotten yourself wrapped up in another terrifying incident. And knowing you, I suppose the wheels of fate must be turning once again. No one can escape the fates you were born with. I'm curious to see what twists and turns and strange fate of yours will take you down. Perhaps Yasuoka's age has given her this philosoph philosophical perspective on life. However, she's certainly not cold-hearted. If, if she were, 
She wouldn't bother leading a hand to people who face a daunting fate. By the way, who is this girl? Marohashi stares at Yasuka. This is a far different look than the glare she directed at us earlier. There's not a trace of her prior hostility. Um... You're Toako Yasuka, aren't you? You're an OMG, OMG paranormal experience. Yes, that is I. Oh, are you serious? A legendary celeb is here. She, she, she don't like super nervous now. As with that 180, Marohashi's went from high school to totally excited. She seems overjoyed to meet someone that she's seen on television. Girl, our energy is out of this world, Mr. Asuka. It's so freaking refreshing. No. Yeah. My, my, thank you, my dear. You are also very beautiful. That hair color suits you well. You think so? <laughs> um, Mr. Asuka, can I get an autograph? After that, I asked Yasuoka to help me persuade Marohashi to talk. Because of that, she reluctantly agrees to cooperate with us. I'm only doing this because Mr. Yasuoka asked me. I don't like you. So I don't want to know. Oh, you want to get to know me? Saki Marohashi from 1B. Favorite subjects are math and not math and not math, math and not. My favorite food is sweet red bean buns, and I love looking at motorcycles. Just looking at them? Not riding. Yeah, I don't have a license. I really love the, pla the plating and gold glitter paints on vintage motorcycles. My cousin's the leader of a biker gang. Ah, oh. He got his red chicken on the car of his bike, and he looks so... Fuck. It might not be who I think it is. Once Maruhashi starts... Maruhashi! Ah! It might be the same person. Ah. Uh, I've heard that you're often hanging out by yourself. I can't help that, you know? There's no one in the school that I can talk up to about art. And I get bored talking with them about other stuff. Do you know about anything about Mr. Kokuri? Nope. Never heard of him. Never, never heard of him. Never heard of him before. Who is he anyway? That's a pretty strange name. He's a spirit that haunts the school's second floor hallway. Are you for real? I would have never gone there if I'd known. Stupid to mess around with spirits. Is that spirit shows up from the shrine? He's also said he appears in the fox forest. Not the fox forest. That place should is bad news, huh? I heard weird stories about how oh, someone else is gonna tell me rumors. Yeah, oh, excuse me. Not those kind of stories. I heard punks used to sneak into the forest a long time ago. I don't know if it's real or not, but apparently some of them never come back. Punks in the forest at night, huh? What a strange combination. Don't ask me why, I got no idea. But none of the students ever go near that forest because of that rumor. Dog. I don't remember. It's like there's a blank spot in my memory or some shit. How much you remember then? Mm. I remember going to the corridor after school. I know that place is like off limits, but I like hanging out there, you know. It's empty and the wind feels really nice. I was just pacing out while looking at the sky. But then I got this strange feeling. I got goosebumps. I started freaking out. And it all came from the shrine. So I approached it. And I opened the door. I found a disgusting petri dish inside. I thought it was just a horrible prank, so I went to grab it. And my memory got wiped after that. I don't even remember attacking you or being carried to an infirmary or anything. That's all. So not the one who put the dish there? Of course not. 
My Gramps is the chief priest of, Kin of Kintoki Shrine. Ooh. Prestigious. Ever since I was a kid, I had a fear of the gods drilled into my skull. I don't think I do such blasphemous shit. Hell no. Seeing how pale her face is, I don't think she's lying. She's so pale she lost her ten. What about the picture dish there then? I've asked her everything I can think of. Is Sakimaru Hashi really the hooligan that Mr. Kokuri is targeting? I share my doubts with the mark bearers and ask for their opinion. I don't know. Neither the law of, of matter conversation, nor Euclidean geometry apply to spiritual beings, so it's not like I can apply logic here. I don't know about her being the target, hooligan, but she's definitely a delinquent. She's a delinquent, but she respect the shrine. The guy that got attacked and got his ear turned into a mushroom. He opened the shrine and placed a cigarette inside. Well, he placed a cigarette. I'm thinking the same thing. Hey old hag, the spiritual stuff is kind of your whole thing, no? Give us your take. Let's see. Marohashi doesn't strike me as a malicious person. And if she were truly the target, she would have been slain in front of the shrine. Instead, the spirits only chose to drive her mad. In my opinion, I am doubtful that she's your hooligan. Well, who is hooligan then? Even after discussing the matter further, we fail to arrive at a convincing answer to this mystery. That means we're still lacking information. We have no choice but to keep investigating the subject. Which means that our next destination will be the place I've been mentioned earlier. The fox forest behind the school. By the time we finish our discussion, the sun has pretty much set. The night phase of our investigation is about to begin. Either Hiro or Mashita will accompany me for the night. The other will stay here. I'll be managing the sacred objects in Mori's stead tonight. Come to me whenever you gather enough lost souls. You're going to help us out, the Ahsoka. Or of course. I have far more knowledge about the spirit world than you lot. I shall be able to use that knowledge to assist you somehow. Experience is the best teacher, after all. It's dangerous, though. Ah, I appreciate your concern. But I've already lived a long, full life. I don't really value my life as much as I used to. I'd rather not use anyone stronger than me die, though. So please allow me to be of service, Yashiki. Alright. Seeing that we are dealing with spirits here, I'm grateful to have an expert with us. Still, I can't have her walking around the forest in that beautiful kimono. I just have her stay here. You better stay here too, Marahashi. At least until we got a clear answer to who Hooligan is. Sure, I don't mind. I can just ask Mitsasioka to give me life, ad life advice. Life advice? You're too young for that. Ah, everyone has their own problems, you know? It doesn't matter how old they are. Even my own grandchild. And just like that, the three women quickly become immersed in the chit chat. As I look at them. Hey. Master approaches me. Take this, Yashiki. He ends over the. Oh, god damn it, this again. There's something heavy inside. I rub my fingers along the paper bag. It seems to be made of metal and has a rectangular section leading to a more rounded section. Mashta, this is... Lower your voice, idiot. You want the others to find out. But I don't know how to use one of these. Relax, this one doesn't have a safety. Just aim... So I just... almost just fired a gun in my, in my foot. Still. Because it doesn't have a safety, be very careful with it. I don't cause it to go off by accident. Now give me this kind of thing to civilians. It's for your own safety. I have no idea what we could do, be dealing with. And if something happens to me, you'll be glad to have it. Don't hesitate to use it when needed, you hear me? Okay. What are you two doing? Nothing. But all set then, let's get on with this investigation. 
The Fox Forest is located in the northern cor corner of the school, just beyond the Shrine Gate. To get to the Shrine Gate, take the road in front of the Clock Tower. Hope we find something. Maybe Cocteau will be there. I haven't seen him since he ran, he ran off. I have no idea he went though. It's hard to say, but there's nothing we can do about it. I recall Cocteau's parting words to us. I was summoned. I have to go or else I'll be killed. MK. Mortal Kombat will call Cocteau. And for what reason? By the way, Yashki. Hey, is in a Kamatsu at Kujo Mansion? Why don't you give him a- Oh yeah! Eita may be able to search the background details of this case on the internet. But I'm still not sure I should involve him in this. We're in a dire need of information now. If I have any questions, I should call him. Okay, save the game. For goodness gracious, save the game. Dog. Could I have with me again? Uh, change. Ah, Madoka and my boyfriend. Okay. I'm going to the forest with who? Ah, let's go as it is. Uh, Yasuoka is here as well. There is, uh, I can call later if I want. Call later. I pick up the phone and informally I punch in the mention's number. I think that that's what I was, was supposed to do. Like I'm Atsu here. It's me, Yashki. I need you I need you to look up a few things for me. Sure, alright. Then what you need me to find. I shared details of the incident to Aita. You just keep running to spirits one after another, huh? There is way too much evil stuff terrorizing that school, man. If I was enrolled there, I would have just taken off running and never looked back. So why do you want to ask? Yep. Chat. This for this afternoon, Yashiki. What are you talking about? Damn, we forgot already. You helped me cheer her up. You cheer Suzu up. Oh uh, yeah, back at the hospital. I only did that because he encouraged me. Nah, you mean a lot to her, you know? She really believes in you. Everyone's really depending on you. I'm jealous. Ah, it's no big deal. Oh, come on. You need to be so... No need to be so humble, man. Makes me wonder if I'm impressive as you when I reach your age. I wonder. It all depends on your effort level, I guess. Do your best. You still got plenty of time to become the man you want. Yeah, I'll give him I'll give him my best shot. Okay. Kokuri. Mr. Kokuri? Never heard of him. Really? I knew it. No hits. Really? I got it in five seconds. And a futile gaijin in a creepy pasta page. Maybe he's a minor spirit that's only know at Kono Heart Academy. Mm, ah, maybe maybe yeah. Ah, they're talking about the spirits, not the, um, the school thing. Okay. A lot of hooligans show up when I search. Can you try and narrow it down a bit? Like, give me a first or last name or something? When the word is hooligan? While we still don't have information, we don't have a suspect. Find me any information, information about Shinichi Kakuta. Shinichi Kakuta. Shinichi Kakta from Konoha Academy, huh? You got it. The Kakta kid seems to be famous in the karate world. He performed well in several tournaments and has a promising future. Man, I kinda you're jealous of everyone. But there's a post that caught my attention. What post? There's a comment thread on the article. With the obvious caveats of never trusting any unsecure unsourced comments you can find on the internet. This character kid supposedly punched students from another school and injured them. That'd be a clear-cut case of criminal assault. The threat continues on. Despite that incident, he still took part in a tournament afterwards. He should have at least gotten a house arrest if something like that was true. I wonder what was going on. 
a bit tangled here, so about that. That's suspicious. You must say he's seen at a Konohara Academy alumnus, powered up the incident. Oh, I read it wrong. See, the problem is... Let me just say what my problem is. The game is posting text here, and I'm reading with the game. With my eyes. My eyes is going with the game as the text is written. But my mouth, as while the test is here, my mouth is reading here. So I just go like boom with my eyes. And my mouth just tries to follow that. And it never goes right. Hmm. I, I starting to understand why people wait for the text to finish uh, showing up. And if I decide to speak. If that's true, Kakuta's probably pretty indebted to them. It doesn't help that I naturally skip anyway. <laughs> If these rumors about Kakuta are true, the fine upstanding students on the disciplinary committee actually has two faces. How would that be related to this case, though? Red mushrooms growing out of a dead centipede. Ugh. You say that makes me feel gross. Glad I don't have to see the real thing. Can you do a research? No? Alright. Talk to you later. I mean, you have the whole internet at your hands. You, you, you could help a little bit. Can I go to the old building? Oh. Hooligan gone to Fox Forest. Eat Crimson Devil to see invisible cookery. Ew, you want me to eat the centipede? Again? What's wrong, Yashki? It's nothing. This has gotta be the work of that female doll again. She wanted to tell me something. Hooligan has gone to the fox forest. Eat the chrism devil to see the invisible cookery. If the previous pattern holds, this information must have something to do with the spirits. I have no idea what that doll goal is. But it doesn't hurt to keep an information in mind. Oh, okay. Clock tower? Anything, um... Ah, this goes to the forest. Uh... Can I go back? Courtyard. Ah, this is the uh, Denali statue, right? A massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. It's darkened, but gives off the impression that it has been here for quite some time. Good to know. Oh god! <laughs> I see the entrance to the clock tower. The door is locked tight. Looks like we're not getting in right now. <laughs> I puts a smile on my face. I like it. Oh, look at this place. We arrive at the north end of the school grounds. The shrine gates we see before us must be the entrance to the fox forest. Hmm. An old shrine gate. Looks regal despite its dull color. Beyond the gate is a dense, gloomy forest. Heaven forbid. Looks like the entrance to another world. A traffic cone and a barrier are blocking the way. I imagine they're here to prevent people from going in. However, this might have the opposite effect. They're quite attention grabbing and it's not difficult to bypass the barrier. I mean, yeah. As I said on the last stream, you ask people to avoid the fire, and they're gonna go there to take pictures. The fox forest is just up ahead. From the shrine gate, an overgrown path continues deeper into the forest. It should be the path Abe mentioned. The path that connects to Kokuri Shrine, former location at the school, with the shrine of the forest. Mr. Kokuri uses this path to go back and forth between the two shrines. 
Pretty sure they wanted to close the road, but literally anyone can get through this. The path ahead is unknown territory. Stay sharp, hero. I know that. You don't have to tell me. We delve deeper into the pitch black forest. As we press forward, the lights from the flashlight illuminate more and more trees crowding in around us. But I'm so riled up that the shadowy forms look like a horde of monsters to me. Who knows? Maybe real monsters poised to strike just beyond the imagined monsters I'm seeing. Once my mind starts down that train of thought, my skin starts to crawl. I'm, g I'm getting in my own head and making myself paranoid. Blah. Ah, lazy mouth. Blah. Hmm. Before long, we arrive at the old path leading to the shrine. Although it's only a few minutes from the gates, I feel like we've entered another world. So this is the fox forest. I got a bad feeling about this place. Like, a really, really bad. You want me to get Mashta to take over? No, I can handle this. I have to risk to save Diamond. Even I did her best. Those two aren't here right now, but we all did this before. Four months ago, a few serial case alongside Hiro, Iron Diamond. I guess she must recall that time. Wait for me, Diamond. 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 One. Hmm. Hiro keeps repeating Diamond's name over and over like it's a good luck chant. Guess that's a way of summoning up the courage to keep going, seeing she's got she's not good with the paranormal. Are you sure you don't want Mashta? Okay, I calm down now. Let's go, Yashiki. Oh, you're here. Is that Kakuta? Hey, Kakuta. Why are you here? This... This is the end. What end? I didn't do him a favor. I shouldn't have gotten involved. Fox... He's bumbling something to himself. His voice is hoarse, as if his words are cut up in the back of the straw. What the hell happened, Kakta? Uh, Mr. Yashki. I... Oh god. Okay. That just happened. His face bulges from routine, red lines webbing across his skin as he's pulled apart. His expression contorts in agony as he screams. Mushrooms sprout from within his wounds, rooted somewhere inside his head. More and more mushrooms split his skin to pieces. What is happening to Kakuta's body? It's a mushroom! Okay. I'm not skipping Dex, by the way. Oh, and he ran. Clutching his face, Kakuta runs away while screaming. His figure disappears into the woods. Did you see that? Could that be... Mr. Kokuri's curse? I'm immediately reminded of the rumors of a delinquent boy whose ears turn into mushrooms. What's happening to Kakuta is even more horrific than the rumors. But how? How could Kakuta be cursed? I think we know the answer to that. He's cursed because he's a hooligan. What did he do? I don't know, he punched a kid in the face. And apparently he bribed a bunch of officials to continue doing his thing. He's worse than a hooligan, he's a criminal. Kakuta seems to have an idea why he got cursed. If you do whatever he did, you'll be cursed too. Hey. You don't know what action provokes Mr. Kokuri's ire. Which means you need to be extremely careful in this forest. Just be respectful. 
and don't uh, mushroom. A cluster of mushrooms is growing in a tree trunk. I hear something. Sounds like a human groaning. Is there something in the darkness? Yeah. I wave my flashlight towards the direction of the groan. The nearby trees are illuminated by the light. But it's still too dark to see anything. I stare into the darkness, trying to get a better look. What happened? Those eyes... Those eyes are looking at us. Is this spirit phenomenon tied to Kokuri? Or did other spirits in this forest do it? I don't really know. Hmm? At that moment, I felt something strange at the bottom of my foot. I feel like I'm stepping on something small and hard. I raise my foot and pick up the item. It's a tooth. But after editing uh, three chapters, I know that the tooth are actually not increasing in size. Oh, what happened? Huh. There's an old stone lantern. There's an animal carved on top of the lantern. Looks like a mouse. Does this animal mean something? I'm getting curious now. I better look it up. Um... The stone is quite weathered, so these things are quite old. Its surface is mostly covered in moss and mushrooms. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Another one. A cow. Mm -hmm. Was a helicopter. It's actually new. Is this in a helicopter area? Oh, now it's a motorbike. Great. A tiger. A mouse, a cow, and a tiger. Anything else? A rooster. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> a dog. Okay. And I'm finished. Oh, is it uh, the, 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 ba, the, ba, Kakuta? Probably is. Why don't notice that? A stooped figure is blocking the path. It's a man with mushrooms running from his body. Or rather, it's more like a man who has become mushrooms. He bellows a maddening roar, and I feel a thick haze constricting my consciousness. Before I can react, I'm back on the path. Did the spirit do this? My head hurts. Even my worst hangovers don't feel this bad. Doesn't seem like we can move forward as long as the creature is here. We need to do something. Uh, how far are we saying we can go? I'm back on the rabbits. God damn it. We need to do something about the mushroom boy, or else we'll never make any progress. Let's examine this place thoroughly, Yashiki. Who knows, there might be an, an offshoot path somewhere. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's an option. Oh, behind the stones there seems to be an animal tracks leading further into the woods, diverging from the path. Huh, rooster. Pushing my way through the dense foliage, we walk further into the woods. I wonder how far this trail goes. What if we can find our way back home? Just follow the chicken. 
and shroud the shroud the chicken. There's an open air in front of us. Something's here. What is that? We arrive at a small meadow. There are some random things scattered on the ground here. Um, that is a, a drum. Uh, I had something else in my in my mind. Maybe it is like a drum used for a campfire or something. Everything is old and usable. You may as well call it junk. Perhaps this place used to be a garbage dump. Maybe. For discardables. Ah, it's a, like a cart thingy. I do miss the random ghosts in the forest. Oh. Even when I point my flashlight towards the forest, all you can see ahead is darkness. I feel something terrifying might pop out at any moment. Still, I can't help but stare in the void. Something seems to be staring back in the void. We both stare into the void. <sighs> Was that an animal sound? It's not a human to me, though. How's that voice? I better not stay here any longer. Well, that better be started. An abandoned decaying drum. His frame has gotten rusty and has begun to expose by the elements. Why is it in the middle of the forest though? Better take a closer look. The rim of the drum is stained pitch black. It's too dark to see anything inside. Should I take a closer look? Jump scare! I get up next to the drone and peek inside. The inside is also pitch black. My guess is that they use this to burn things, yeah. I assume they are burning garbage given the surroundings. Why did they do it here though? There is something at the bottom of the drone. It's not enough light for me to make out what it is with my naked eyes. Should I shine my flashlight on it? Oh god. <laughs> Whoa! What's wrong? I just start screaming out of screaming. Just start screaming out of the blue. In the drum, there's a hand with mushrooms. What'd you say? Mash appears into the drum. Can't see shit. There's no light here. Okay. I turn my flashlight towards the inside of the drone while Mashta looks in. However, we only find a thick pile of dark grey ashes. There are several mushrooms as well, the same ones as on the nearby trees. Anyone can tell this drone hasn't been used in a long time. Something in the ashes. It's a goddamn tooth. Oh. Was it not just a spiritual phenomena? Whose hand was it then? Yoshi. There's an old signboard on top of a broken trailer. It's a wooden signboard. This kind of thing is used to serve as a notice board in the olden times. These days you don't see them outside of period dramas. There's a brief sentence written in old fashioned script. To the shrine, two beats for the monkey, three beats for the tiger, one for the snake. Two for the monkey. Three tiger. Wait. Three for the tiger. One for the sake. In that order. Okay. That's not making any sense to me. You're a teacher, aren't you, Ashki? Solve this one. Mashta immediately gives up. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to unravel this puzzle myself. Mm, let's see. It starts out with two to the shrine. So maybe it's identical to a ritual one has to perform before visiting the shrine. Monkey, tiger, and snake are obviously referring to the Chinese zodiac signs. So what does this beat means? Uh, clapping? 
Right. Popping your hand is the typical part of a shrine visit. So that seems fit. So that means you have to clap your hands in a particular manner before going to the shrine. This is probably how people in the past showed their respects to the gods living in the shrine. I jot down the contents on the board just to go. Oh, I did the same. Next, did the um. What's that? Pazuzu? Pazuzu. So two before the dog. Oh, that's the dog. Dog, rooster, monkey. Monkey. Clap. Two times for the monkey. Then we go all the way back. This is the mouse. This is the cow. This is the tiger. Three for the tiger. Then we have the dragon. Is this the rabbit or the snake? No, this is the dragon. So this is the snake. No, it's the rabbit. That's the snake. Okay, I replaced the dragon and the rabbit. The snake and the rabbit. No, I did it right. Okay. I want for the snake. Two claps for the monkey, three claps for the tiger, and one clap for the snake. Alright. I must have changed something. Let's see what it was. Why are you giggling? The mushroom man lets out a shout of joy before vanishing. Two beats for... Okay, okay, okay. Maybe the board message helped us exercise the impurity, aka the spirit. Hey, you know, a monster was wearing a Konohara Academy uniform. I don't think it's Kakuta. Nope, had a blonde hair and wasn't as big as Kakuta. What the fuck was that bastard at? Hmm, let me think. Marohashi mentioned some delinquents who disappeared into the forest. Maybe he's one of them. Kokuri deep said a grudge is swirling all around this forest. One slip up and that figure might be the last thing we ever see. Hmm. A boar, of course. But since I'm a simpleton, I'm gonna call it a Buddha. The twelfth sign of the Chinese zodiac, the boar. And he started again, stop doing that. Okay. Oh, it's growing on the, uh, oh. On the dirty. We find ourselves in an open space after passing the gates. It should be the grounds of the shrine. However, there are no remains of any buildings to be seen. Are they completely decayed? Maybe. Oh, the, oh, the shadows. Look. That's cool. Hello. Hmm. An old stone lantern with mushrooms scattered here and there. At that moment, I spot something glinting on top of the lantern. I step closer and find a small object on it. Oh, good catch. You make a good detective, Yashki. Except it's a tooth. Is that another one? Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, it's just lanterns. On the path, okay. Mm. Thick bushes and shrubs crowd this area. Hey, Ashki. 
Do you see that red thing beyond those bushes? Not really. I strain my eyes staring at the bushes. But it's too dark for me to see anything. You can't see it? <laughs> you need no glasses. Come here. Master walks towards the bushes as following from behind him. Him from behind. Remember, blah. With my bright flashlight in hand, we cross a spacious open area. If Kokiri was actually in here, they'd be perfect targets. Just thinking about that sends chills down my spine. Look, there it is. Oh. There is a red figure lying on the inner area. Uh, oh. Shit. Hang on a second. Those are clumps of red plants that are in the shape of a human. Still, this doesn't explain anything about the shrine. We better take a closer look. I don't want to. The mushrooms growing here are thin red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside the petri dish. I don't get it. I have to cluster in such a strange shape. Um, I don't have it. Oh, there it is. Do I, um... Do I care about it? No? Okay. Are you sure about that? Hold on. You sure I don't use this at all? Okay. That was something. Do I use the petri dish? No? Tryptophobia mushrooms, okay. It's a pig. Now nah, that must be something, come on. It says petri dish, but a petri dish... Shut up. Won't do anything. I'll check everything again. Umbrella shaped mushrooms, tripophobia. Is that old stones? There's a boar. Twelve sound is zodiac. Spect. The stone is quite wide, so the thing is quite old. The surface is mostly covered in moss and mushrooms. I hate this game. We follow the animal tracks, surrounded by overgrown flora, once again. And one of us waiting for me in, in this deep dark forest. I mean, there are like 12 of these things, okay? I don't want to spend time checking 12 different dingy looking lantern stone motherfuckers on the middle of the forest, okay? There's a lot of things. It's the same thing I keep saying, like, if it is important, why, why hide it? There's an open air in front of us, something's there. Is it a mushroom farm? Several logs have been arranged in this meadow. They kind of resemble a fence. An inordinate number of mushrooms are growing around the logs. Maybe someone even used these logs to cultivate mushrooms. Yeah, it's a mushroom farm. Be careful, Yashiki. These mushrooms might have something to do with Kokuri. Now be careful. Oh. There is some mushroom shaped things. On the floor. Mm -hmm. A stump with mushrooms growing on it. What's that? Oh, hold on. Something stuck on the other side of the stump. Take a few steps close and find a metal grip protruding from the ground. A metal grip? To try to pull it out. It's actually a shovel. Oh. What's it doing here? <laughs> it 
Excuse me. That voice just now. So like a male's voice. Oh, male's voice. Hero is not showing any reaction. Looks like I'm the only one who heard it. The shovel might have some sort of tail attached to it. Despite the creepiness, the shovel might come in handy. I decided to take it, despite my pounding heart's protestations. Lost souls held. Huh. It's the first time seeing that. On the ground, I see a mass with a rather odd shape. What is that? Better examine it. An ominous mass surrounded by moss. It doesn't resemble a human. Are you sure? I should dig it to find out what it is. Well, never know unless we check. Reach out for the mass poking on it. It's harder than I thought. There's no doing it with my bare hands. I need something with sharp edge. Take out the shovel and stick it into the mass. A part of the mass crumbles away. I carefully pick it up and look it over. With the shovel, please. I believe it is a kind of mushroom. Its surface is hard as a tree bark. So this mass is a giant mushroom with moss growing on the surface. Something buried in the place I dug out. It's a duke. It's a, it's a duke. It's a tooth. Hmm. Logs that assemble like a fence. I can't see what's on the other side of the fence. Let's move in closer and get a better look. Oh no. We find a corpse wearing a Konohara Academy uniform on the ground. Unset unsettling whitish mushrooms are growing from the body. Is this another victim of Kin uh, Kokuri's curse? What shall we do? Stay back. I'll inspect the corpse. I cautiously approach the dead body. Where should I start? Uh, the pants pocket. I reach inside the corpse's pants pocket. Inside I find a smartphone. It's pretty much stock and has no distinctive information, making it hard for us to guess who owned it. Maybe I can learn something from the phone itself. I press the buttons to no avail. Guess it's been broken. I reach inside the corpse's blaze pockets. Find a piece of paper inside the pockets. Seems I've been torn from something. I think it should have been on my flashlight so I can examine the paper's contents. Fox Lakata, a type of fungus that only lives in fox forests. Its soporocarp doesn't have a kappa or stalk, takes the shape of a reed. A poisonous mushroom, it contains 10 times the amount of psychocybin, psilocybin, hallucinogenic, as the infamous uh, that. As of its writing, there are currently no laws regulating possession or cultivation of this fungus. However, considering the negative impact it would have on individuals, especially minors, official regulations and study are needed. Descriptions of a plant are written on it. This must be the missing page from the guide in the storage room. Scarlet strip shaped mushrooms. It should be referring to those plants. They're fungus. So these red mushrooms are, ca are called Fox Lakata. According to the information, they seem to be a mushroom with strong hallucinogenic effects. They make you see dead people. There's another piece of paper inside the pocket. Unlike the first, this one is written in rough, hurried penmanship. The author of this note was definitely pissed off. Fox Lakata and the mother at Lake Ass. The minor offender in this case seemed to have ingested Fox Lakata, and the one who sold the mushroom to them was Kay. I've seen shifty looking youngsters roaming around the fox forest. Looks like they intend to harvest Fox Lakata. There were also some students from our school, including Kay. 
I didn't disclose this information to the public out of fear that it would damage the school's reputation. That was a grave mistake. I take responsibility for everything. A mother of a mother and a child. A mother and a child. Who's mother? Mother? Okay. I like gas. An incident I never heard before. My eyes are fixed on the corpse. Ugh. I can feel gastric juices swell up in my throat. The more I stare at it, the more repulsive it looks. It used to be a human being, and now it looks like this? Don't look away. I yielded a mild castigation to myself, continue observing the body. But the sprouting mushrooms have torn up the uniform. It isn't that dirty. It must have died recently. A green tie. That in case is the second year. Mushrooms are growing all over his large body. That's all there is to inspect. Did you discover anything, Ashki? Yeah, quite a bit. Describe the corpse's features and, sh and show Hiro the items I found. Hmm. I'm afraid that corpse is him. <laughs> Abe. I wish. Hmm? Why me to make you think that? A second year student with a large build has a torn page of scientific journal with him. It's obviously Kakuta. Kakuta had been cursed by Kokuri. The curse didn't end just because he ran away. He probably lost his stamina here. Maybe we can learn why Kakuta came to this forest to inspect his belongings. You better keep them, Yashiki. Agreed. I mean, he was selling drugs. I offered a silent prayer for his soul and leave the place. I realized something on the way back. Unlike the other victims, Cactus' corpse didn't disappear. I wonder why. The only possible reason I can come up with is that maybe when he passed, he wasn't human any longer. Cactus had basically become mushrooms. Even his parents wouldn't recognize him at the state. I wonder what's a better death. Not even leaving behind a corpse or being completely stripped of all your dis disguise distinguishing human features. Hmm. Still here. Mm -hmm. Mushrooms are growing on a lump of moss. There is nothing particularly interesting here, not even red mushrooms that resemble fox lakata. Oh, now I have to find out. Oh, God dang it. Clumps of red plants have formed a human shape. The mushrooms growing here are seeing red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside a petri dish. There's gotta be fox lakata. I don't get it. Why are they clustered in such a strange shape? Are you kidding me? The shovel. I take the small shovel from my bag. My gut's telling me something buried, something's buried here. There's enough motivation to start trusting the shovel. Oh yeah, because they grow out of uh, organic matter, right? Like flesh and exoskeletons and stuff. My shovel hit something hard. Being careful not to break whatever it is, I try to excavate the dirt around it. Before long, the object becomes visible. They're old human bones. The bones are clad with tether clothes. Dirt has worked its way through the fiber now, but I believe this used to be white. Whose bones are these? I don't know, but... The white clothes makes me think that it could be Mr. Kokuri from the rumors. Abe said Kokuri is a spirit that was formerly a priest. 
Do you think this corpse was a priest? We may find out once we get a better look at the skeleton. I crouch next to the corpse and inspect it. From the bone structure, it appears those bones belong to a man. However, they don't really have any special identifying features that would help us, like a missing finger or something. You just dug out his head. At this time of night, we better with hard press to cross check the teeth against the other records too. Making a matter worse, other than the shreds of the formerly white clothing, there are no belongings to be found. The fact that his body is buried here might indicate that he was murdered. If so, then his belongings might have been stolen at the time. Who are you? Words full of anxiety and confusion stumble out of my mouth. Ugh. Deep inside the old school, the dead fox god that looks alive, inside the stomach. What? What was that? A man's voice suddenly echoes through my mind, as if he's trying to answer my question. But I believe these are murmurs of his deep resentment. If you listen too carefully, you may get overwhelmed by the regrets of the deceased. We can't stay here any longer, it's dangerous. Let's go, hero. I don't think we got any useful information here. Sure. Oh god. There's a gun. Suddenly the sounds of a gunshot rings out and reverberates through the shrine grounds. Hi. That's that's a ghost with a gun. That's literally a ghost with a gun. You're a ghost, why do you have a gun? Just 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 annoys the heck out of me. Got something resembling a hunting rifle in his hands. Is that Mr. Cockery? It is. Mr. Kokuri disappears. God damn it, why does he have a gun? Another gunshot rings out and the bullet hits the ground near our feet, spraying us with dirt. This is bad. That thing does real damage and he's trying to shoot, with, shoot us with it. This is dangerous, Yashiki. We need to take cover somewhere. After saying that, Hiro hides behind a nearby tree. I do the same and hunker down behind a different tree. The bullets hit somewhere completely off target. The bullets hit a spot near the lantern. How do I say this? It's surprisingly bad. I can't say for certain because it's dark and it's far away, but isn't he using a hunting rifle? Guys is gun barrel so poorly maintained that he can't hit anything from a distance. True, but we shouldn't be careless. He only needs one lucky shot to kill us. What should we do? Cocker is nowhere to be found. Well, we can't stay here. We won't keep missing forever. Everything is certainly trending very badly for us. Even if we try to make a mad dash for it, the road ahead is straight and narrow. Even a bad shooter with a bad gun is going to be able to hit their target eventually in this kind of situation. What should we do then? I don't know, um... We really can make a move as long as we don't know where Kokori is. Oh. Hold on. We can't see him right now. I feel like I remember something, but I'm not sure. Keep calm and think. There must be clues somewhere. Uh... I'm gonna have to trip on shrooms! Hell yeah! Run along the path and the skin now. Eat some of the centipedes, eat some of the mushrooms, inspect the body. Hero, look at this. Do you notice anything? I point the petri dish towards Hero so they can see it. Hero starts squinting to see what I'm pointing at. Now that I think about it, it's pretty far away in this dark house. But 99%, come on. 
The more static it's, the more creeped out I get. The bright red mushroom makes it look like the centipede has horns, like a demon centipede. centipede. A demon, huh? Just like I've heard of somewhere recently. Um. Eat the mushroom? I open the pizza dish and decide to eat some of the mushrooms that grow in the centipedes. I go in a tree balls, man. I bite one of the mushrooms, stick it out of the insect's body and tear it off with force. Then with steady determination I swallow it down. I feel my body getting warm. Like I just drank a mug of hot water. My heart is beating so fast my vision starts to blur. This is probably the effects of the shrooms. Hey Ashki, are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Once my heartbeat returns to normal, I slowly stabilize. My vision stops going blurry and I'm no longer in a daze. Then a mysterious figure appears before my eyes. He's here. I can see Kokuri. Looks like it's the right choice. Kokuri hasn't moved an inch. Rest assured, he hasn't come any closer. Yashki? Can you see Kokuri? Yeah, thanks to the, to the red demon. It creeps on devil to see the invisible Kokuri. Female Dom mentioned it before. Calling us hooligans, Kokori aims his gun in our direction. The bullet hits the tree we're hiding behind. Oh, seems like he's getting way better at shooting now. There's no way you can run for it like this. One thing's for certain, we can escape right now. We need to find some way to fight back. Since Hiro can see Kokori, the only one who can fight him is me. There's not much I can do to fight back, but I gotta give him my all. Uh, Yashiki? Really? Reset a mantra and attack with a talisman. Uh, 83%. What the hell? I doubt it would work, but I give it a shot. I came out of hiding, hold up a status model out towards Kokori. I need to reset a chat next. I'm not too sure about this one, but I guess I'll try Kujikiri, the nine cuts chance. Power, energy, harmony, healing, permanent. Oh, what? <laughs> Shut the hell up, kid! As I expected, this not, did not work. I'm attacked instead. Well then. I open this suspicious paper bag and take out the gun inside. Huh? Oh, why'd you get that, Yashki? Well, not gonna complain since we're in danger and he's shooting at us right now. Kill him! Give it a try. Got no idea if this is even gonna work against Kokuri. Honestly, I'm just hoping my attack will surprise him enough that he flees. Not expecting much, I poke my head out of, out of cover and ready the gun. It works. Taking aim at Kokuri, I pull the trigger immediately. Kokuri also shoots his gun at the same time, and his shots graze my legs. This is awful. My bullets don't hit Kokuri. I want to take my time and aim before firing my shot. But that only leaves me defenseless for a long time. Is there a better way to do this? But he just said that Hiro can't do anything, so that's why I didn't ask for help. Oh, 82.
Hero, can you do something to distract Kokri for a couple seconds? Okay, I'll see if I can be a decoy for a bit. Believing in Hero's tactics, I put my head out and ready my gun. This time it's gonna fail. Yep. She got shot? Nah, nothing happens. Here comes out of hiding spot and holds a fist sized stone into the open space. Kokuri turns towards Hiro. Great job, Hiro. A day came and Kokuri has now stopped moving. Breathe deeply and calmly pull the trigger. Kokuri lets out an eerie howl. Did you hear him, Ashki? I think I hit him. Although I guess it's more like my bullet just passed through his body. Well, he is a spirit after all. If you could defeat him with a gun, no one would have come to investigate and you just get the military. Oh. Wild man shooting. Kokori screams in anger and fires his gun. He then begins to approach her slowly. Hello. Shit, he's coming closer. What the heck? I don't want just to make him mad. I want to believe this is the right choice. Kokuri is breathing hard, he seems angry. The closer he gets to us, the more in danger we are. That also makes it easier to shoot him now, but would that really help us? What should we do? We gotta make a move, he's going to kill us while we sit here thinking. I know that already. If you knew how to deal with Kokuri's shots, you might be able to find an opening and escape. I have 4 health. Our bullets won't, won't work against Kokori, but we need to create an opening to survive. Um. Shoot at the mass, shoot at, shoot at the heart, shoot at the rifle. I think the mask? I have one chance of doing this. I mean, unless I fail. So, but can it be a decoy and one more hero? Alright, I'll try. Trusting hero, I pick my head out of cover and ready my gun. Hero does the same and throws a fist sized stone towards the open space. Kokori turns towards hero. Great work, hero. I take him and Kokuryo, I still start moving, breathe deeply and calmly pull the trigger. Kokuryo lets out an eerie howl. Did, did you hear him, Yashiki? Unfortunately, my bullet passes through Kokuryo's mask. Ah, it was supposed to be the, the gun, okay. I mean, the gun for me made less sense. Oh god. Whoop, just unzip it. Goes crazy with them choppers. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cocker turns towards Hero. The game and Kokuri has now stopped moving to breathe deeply and calmly pull the trigger. Kokuri lets out an eerie howl. I still definitely hit him. I saw it too. He hit his running hunting rifle. Kokuri sounds frustrated and angry. Something might have happened to this rifle. Did your attack jam the rifle? It's now or never. Kokuri can shoot us, let's go hero. Alright, escape means we won, right? Maybe. Once we reach the path, we beat our feet and don't slow down. It's the right choice. 
Yay. Hiro and I race out of there as fast as we can. We're running straight for the exit. There's no guarantee that Mr. Kokuri will let us go even if we escape the forest. Sleeve Mark Kashima. He can, like Sleeve Mark Kashima, he can probably follow us now that he said he sat on us. We have to be careful everywhere we're going forwards. Even so, our only choice right now is to run for our lives. Even if hell is gonna be hot on our heels whenever we go. Our only goal is survival, and I'm sure that Hero feels the same. The exit! I can see the exit! Is he still chasing us? He's not. Looks like we survived the hunts for now. I thought I was dead. I better still clear of the forest in the meantime. There's no familiar ground to us and he could attack from anywhere. He looks exhausted. And I'm sure I do as well. Let's take this opportunity to head to the infirmary and sort out everything we just learned. Okay. And I'm gonna walk there. A sigh of relief escapes my lips the moment we step inside the infirmary. I'm lucky that I'm seeing these walls again, and that's not an exaggeration in the slightest. Time to tell Yasuoka and the others what happened in the forest. Okay, save the game. I beat. Where's my controller? Okay. I beat. I took something for small signs of a migraine that was showing up. I want to finish this and I'm probably going to take a nap later. Yes. To rest my eyes. There is three left. Feels like I missed some from the last chapter. I didn't check how many there was on chapter four. I just saved. I come back. Took you a while. Yeah, so Oka and Mashita are the only people inside the infirmary. Where is Maruhashi? Ah, oh, she went to the restroom. Alone? She's aware of the dangers the shrine possesses now, and she's not headed to the forest. She should be fine. Koku is not the only threat here, though. The departed is roaming around the school as well. Although the departed only kills the targets after issuing a notice, so Maruhashi should be fine. Good thing she's not here then. I'll give you a quick summary of what happened before she returns. There are things I don't wanna hear. I don't want her to hear. I still I'm, I'm still being. Uh, <laughs> what is it? There we go. Not being anymore. I see. Shokakutais. It's painful to know that a young life has been lost like that. Does that mean Kakuta was a hooligan? More or less. Kakta stole a document about Fox Lakata. So he must have known something about it. Though I find it hard to imagine that he was acting on his own. Fox Lakata is a strong hallucinogen, so it wouldn't surprise me if other people were doing something with it. A strong hallucinogen, huh? I, I like to study it at the Institute. I may be a new kind of alkaloid, very intriguing. Can you give me some of those Fox Takara to research once you wrap up this investigation? Uh, no. What a crap, yo. This thing needs to be in the hands of the government. I'm gonna submit this shit for my friend at the DEA, and I'm not having it any other way, got it? Wow, responsibility. From Ashta. Jeez, you're not fun. Oh, she's back. I'm back. Ah, oh, you're here already. Hey, you better fill me in too. Don't leave me out of everything. Fine. Cactus dead. We got shot. Um, people are becoming mushrooms. Yeah. Even all the bits about Cactus death, I tell her 
what happened in the forest. I concocted a story and said that I found the paper on the phone lying on the ground. And so Cacta was in the forest. How was he there though? I don't know. I think he got a call. Maybe his phone can tell you something. Unfortunately, it's broken. I try and press on the button, but... Let me take a look. Maruhashi starts touching the phone screen with her own phone. It's not broken, the battery is just dead. Anyone with a phone should be should be able to realize this. Jeez, how about this tech stuff? Are, are you, Grandpa? Uh, sorry, you got me there. Watch how that will work with his phone at home. Maybe you should try and charge it, and then see if you can get something out of it. I hope it's not far from here. Phone's going to be pretty useless to us with a dead battery. Let's take her up on her offer. Alright, I'll be back. She's cool, I like her. Manohashi's quickly exiting for me. Also, she's Maruhashi's cousin. From the second game. And anyone who's a family member of a cool person like Maruhashi gotta be cool as well, more or less. There's not a rule, but... I don't know, I'll trust her. What should we do now? Should we wait since the kid calls us? I object to that course of action. We should resume the investigation. It's for your sake as well, Yashiki. Hmm? What do you mean by that, Yasuoka? I can tell. You're being targeted by spirits. Excuse me? Sooner or later, that spirit will find its way to you. If that happens while you're unprepared, you'll meet the same fate as Kakuta. Ah, for fuck's sake, why is everything so... As a renowned fortune teller and spiritualist, Yasuoka's words carry a lot of weight. I thought maybe the clock had stopped with Kakuta's death, and we have a little more time before he was another. He, there was another target. But it turns out the clock is still ticking, and he's counting down for me. I mean, he's looking for a hooligan, and you kind kind of just desecrated a grave. It was an abandoned, unmarked grave, possible with someone who got murdered. But I don't think. Anyone would like that. What should we do now? We still don't know who exactly Kokuri is, right? That's something we can research. I have an idea. Remember the case from Cactus Documents? Let's look into that murder of a mother and a child, I guess. Whose mother? There is no mother. That was just... Okay. I don't remember seeing a mother on the documents. Has been stuck in my head. How are you going to investigate that? I've not come out to look it up on the internet for us. We should at least be able to pull up a general summary from somewhere. Oh my dad, I mean, we got calling up. Wait, why'd I have to do it? You know how to use the phone, just call him yourself. I don't really like talking to them. Not really on the same wavelength. Ha, <laughs> so that's your issue. Guess you can expect a nice attack on a hard boiled ex detective to get along. Second, like I'm gonna have to be the one to call later. Why do you just give me a chance to save? Again. Hello, Yashiki. Where do you want me to look up? Can you look for any information you can find about a murder of a mother and a child at Lake Cass? Maybe connected to your investigation. Jeez, mother and child being murdered? That sounds awful. I'll try searching. Found something. Ten years ago, a mother and a child were beaten to death by a group of delinquents. I'll share the details now. He's pretty long, so you should probably start taking notes. Way ahead of you. Oh, it's Bills above. And we bought our pen to write down everything Ada says about the murders. 
a mother of a mother and child, Alekaz. Ten years ago, Alekaz in City, a family who went camping was attacked by a group of young men. Mother, Izumi Kyohara, 37, and her daughter, Kozue Kyo Kozue, age 16, were beaten to death. The father, the father, Masaki Kyohara, 40 years old, was gravely injured but survived. He was hus hospitalized for three months. Masaki Kyohara was a teacher at a school in HC, not far from that city. He continued to work there after the incident, but later disappeared. Masaki isn't Masaki the uh, probably is the guy, the biology teacher who was investigating the mushrooms and the fauna, or the flora, not fauna, of the forest. Hmm. The crime was committed by eight juveniles at between the age of 16 and 19. At the time of the crime, they were under the influence of mind altering substances. Due to their ages, names of the perpetrators were not disclosed. The narcotic they were taking at the time was believed to be some new type of psychedelic mushroom. Of the eight juveniles who were arrested, K, who was allegedly the drug dealer, was released due to insufficient evidence. I see. That's horrible. Those violent punks are scarier than spirits. Era might have a point there. Spirits who curse humans are pretty frightening, but humans are responsible for creating spirits in the first place. The malicious actions of people cause grudges, and grudges create spirits. It's a chain of hatred, one that begins with humans. By the way, Yashki, I need to get going soon. Oh? You can leave the mushroom if you want. Thanks for your help today, Eita. No problem at all. Talk to you soon, Yashki. How'd it go, Yashki? Eita told a lot to share. Share the details of the mother with the other three. I see. No wonder it was sticking in my head. Did you work on that case, Master? Come on, man, use your brain just a little bit. That case is 10 years old. I wasn't on the force yet. But now I recall my mentor was the one who told me about it. Nakamatsu pretty much covered the whole thing, though, so I don't have any additional info to add. You think the mushrooms from that case are Fox Sakata? This case is just full of mushrooms, huh? Can argue with that. A curse involving mushrooms growing from your body, Hakuta being turned into mushrooms, and Fox Lakata on the dead centipede on the petri dish. And now we learn about a tragedy caused by Fox Lakata 10 years ago. Everything is connected to mushrooms. Hmm. Boy K, the one who wasn't prosecuted, could have been Kakuta. God damn it, I just told you, that case is 10 years old. There's no way Kakta was involved back then. Well, it's pretty unlikely for him to have been directly involved. But he knew about Fox Lakata. He reacted to the picture dish and even hid the documents. Everything would tie itself up nicely if it turned out to be a mushroom dealer. I imagine we don't have any information yet, however. The key to discovering Mr. Skokuri's identity is likely the link between the past and the present cases. Oh, excuse me, also I believe. Guess that's how we gotta get out of this deduction session. What we need now is some solid evidence. Let's continue the investigation, Yashiki. Yashiki. We don't know where the others are or where to start though. You probably won't find anything in the forest or the shrine in the corridor. Hmm. I have a place in mind. For real? Got some information in the forest that will lead us to the next spot. Um, the voice for the corpse. Right, the voice I heard when inspecting the bones. Deep inside the old school, the dead fox god that, look, that looks alive inside the stomach. That voice told me to go investigate somewhere. 
Maybe heading to the location they mentioned will help us identify that corpse. And if we can learn about the person who became Mr. Kokuri, we can start devising a plan to attack. It sounds great, except we're running out of time. Should really just trust something that I heard from a mysterious voice when so much is at stake. Having trouble making a decision? When you're running out of time and you need to make a tough choice, just trust your instincts and hope for the best. You know what's most important when dealing with spirits? Courage and conviction. Thanks for the reminder. I go in my guts and act on the information the voice gave me. Let's search for the dead fox gods that looks alive in the depths of the old school. Okay. I'm still with Hero. I don't want to change. I mean, I feel like I um, wasted the time I should spend with Master with Hero. Oh. So this is the old building, huh? It's totally giving off bad vibes. The dirty floor and walls are really setting the mood. Well, they don't really use it anymore, so they've been neglecting it quite a bit. Hmm. I wonder what this place was like 10 years ago. Might still be used. 10 years ago? Oh, the late cast mother. One of the victim's husband, a teacher, might have been working at the school. That's why I wanted to come here, isn't it? There's a chance the victim's husband used to be a teacher at Konohara Academy. But I chose to come to this place because that voice told me to. The old school must refer to the old building. Why is the dead fox god that looks alive, then? Why didn't a school might students study living things? Science room! Stop, why is the game doing this today? I don't get it. Oh, it's cursed. Started about this voice again. What's wrong with this place? I feel like I'm going insane. We better find the roof for the curse. I can't run, right? Doesn't look like the root of the curse is here, let's look somewhere else. Shelves? Numerous dead insects are lying inside the dust sink. The curse tooth is rolling around. Found it. This curse tooth is the cause of all this. Our preposterous object, break it now! Yeah, okay. I reach my hand into the sink and pick up the tube. Ugh. This is bad, I'm getting dizzy. Shit! My hand slips and the tube falls. Shouldn't be that far away, gotta find it fast. Are you kidding me? Something small rolling on the floor. I point my light towards it, and unfortunately, it is the cursed tube I was looking for. I found it. It's a good thing I didn't roll under the desk. Yeah, definitely. I'm just step on it. Yeah, I crushed the tube. The cursed tube shattered into pieces. My headache's gone. The curse like phenomena plaguing this place was subsided. And then I lost a tooth. Hmm. Large shelf in the wall, used for lab equipment. Does there seem to be anything behind the dirty glass door? Except, I'll take that back. Something sparkles when I point my flashlight inside. It says Mount King's. Oh, it's a key. It has no tag attached to it. What is this key for? Nice. Mm, oh.
Okay. これは。A bottle of mold infested cardboard boxes. Hiro, help me examine all these boxes. Alright, what should I do? I'll inspect the boxes on the left side. We'll take the two boxes on the right. Pick up the pile of boxes and put them down. The heavy box is filled with old books and prints. r u m m a g e through them, but I don't find anything worth nothing. Except, there's this. Did you find something? Come here, Yashki. The box here is gesturing out, it's filled with old lab equipment. I find something small hiding among the test tubes and beakers. It's a tooth! Nice! It's a pretty small, eerie tooth.、Mm -hmm. I found an old steel cabinet. There's something behind the glass door. Let's get a closer look. It's a dissected scalpel that was probably used for dissection scalpel. Cabinet door is locked though. Can't open it. Oh. The door opens. Open the door and find a dissection scalpel inside. Despite all the dust, the scalpel isn't that rusty. I'll probably still cut things. Nice. <sighs> An old anatomical model covered in dust. He's in such a bad shape that it seems shockingly mundane. But I scrape as I did seeing this as a kid, knowing where the organs are and what they look like is an important part of medicine. Oh, and for the information, I would very much like to decorate my house with one. I want a skeleton in my house. I put it in my, <laughs> in my wardrobe. Scare the shit out of people. Bottles of liquids are lined up on the shelf. The liquid seems like for formalin to me. Botanical specimens are floating inside the bottles. Oh, for a second, I was thinking it was gonna be fingers or eyes. There seems to be something behind the bottles, Yashki. Petri dishes are piled up along the shelf. Inside the dishes are desiccated flowers and leaves, as well as dried moss. Someone's probably collecting these plants for research. They look pretty old. These plants are endemic species from fox forests. The person who collected them might be an author of that research journal. That means. This dish used to be here too. I sat on a possibility. But how did a dish end up inside the card of the shrine then? I don't know either. Might be a spiritual phenomena. I gotta say that this little dish has been an invaluable help to this case. I feel like my steps in investigation are being choreographed by someone else. Yoshi. The stuffed fox specimen on the shelf. A fox guards. We definitely need to inspect this closely. Looking at the creature's features, it stuff, is a stuffed fox. The stuffed fox is real. One intended to be used for education. It was probably taxidermied by, taxi, bleh, bleh. Taxidermied by an artisan. Fox looks alive. The same should a fine art in the city neglected here. The color of his foot has faded. <coughs> Open it up. Deep inside the old school, the dead fox god that looks alive. Must be referring to this fox. I need to check out what's inside his stomach. Maybe whatever secret inside his fox stomach can shine a light on the Mr. Kokuri's identity. I got a feeling something will happen once I figure out what the secret is. There are things that we haven't done yet, so we better finish them before doing this. Should we cut open a stuffed fox stomach? How many tooth am I missing? I'm missing one. Yeah, I'm missing one. Which could be anywhere between here and the forest. Question is, do I care about that? No. 
God damn it. I got a dirty scalpel from my bag and approached the stuffed fox. I pressed the tip of the scalpel, scalpel on the fox belly. And then I slice it open. The fox told me it's escaping. Yikes. A swarm of tiny bugs put out of the fox stomach. Given how low the fox is, I should have expected something like this. But even still, I can't help but being, being disgusted. Brushing away the bugs, I stick my hand inside the stomach, stomach cavity. Huh? This is... I just find... This thing. I show here the plastic square I found. Ah, isn't that a floppy disk? You know what is this, Ryashki? I'm just asking to be sure. It's the thing you use to save data on a computer, isn't it? Correct. If you have a computer with a floppy drive, you should be able to see the data on this disk. Good luck with that. Computer, huh? Now that I think about it, I remember seeing a laptop and a laptop with a floppy drive. You better hurry if you have an idea where, where one is. We need to gather as much information as possible before Mr. Cockery shows up. This is... They departed. They are... Hero's voice starts to crack due to fear. No matter how much I try to prepare myself, I always freeze up before the departed. Can't even speak, much less move. My dear husbands, Kokuri's resentment has killed the hooligan. You are next. He's already here. Should you survive, you'll become my hero. Sure. But you can't save this soul as you are now. You will die here. Tonight. What? The departed is gone. What do they mean? I can't save his soul? Hey, Ashki. They say something. Yeah. I tell Hiro what the departed just told me. I don't get it. By his coming, do they mean? Exactly. We can't run from here until we deal with the Mr. Mr. Kokuri. They really seem re ready to do that. They said that they couldn't save the soul now, right? The current me can save the spirit soul. It's just another hunch, but... See, because I'm lacking the key information I need. If that's the case, then there is no way I can save the spirit. What do I still need? This floppy disk must be the key. I need to see what's on it immediately. So I'll be alright, right? They're just spawning a bunch of nonsense to get you worked up. Here raises her voice frantically. I don't have a response for that right now. What should I do? I mean... Uh... It's not like I knew. So if anything, he's cheating. You 
rock towards the door, trying to leave the science room. However... Oh, he's super close. I'm greeted with a vision of a decaying body covered in mushrooms, wearing a mask resembling a beast skull. A hideous looking cockery standing right there in front of my eyes. What should we do? I can't guarantee that we'll be fully prepared to fight cockery. I wanna run, but the door's blocked and so we don't have any other way or out. Well, any. Well, okay. What should we do then? At that moment, Skokuri lets out a terrifying scream. My entire body is racked with a crippling pain. Oh wow. What is this pain? What are those mushrooms? I hear the unpleasant sound of something growing from the second time. Hero screams crushing their neck and crashing down. My neck? Looks like mushrooms are starting invading Hira's body as well. Which reminds me, this is the same mushroom curse that afflicted Marahashi. Marahashi. So then... If the mushroom infests our whole bodies, what awaits us is death. Kokori simply stares at us in silence. Is he trying to kill us with a curse? He's not showing any signs of reading, reading his gun. What does he want to do? Hmm? Does he want us to say our names or what? Uh... Kozue Kyohara. No, Masaki Kyohara is the name of the professor. Kozue is the name of the daughter. Izumi is the name of the mother. Sinishi Kakuta, no. Whose name should I tell Kokuri? I don't know. She has a lot more success than I do. I say his name. I don't know. Information regarding the Lake Has incident is mentioned in the Fox Takara notes. It is also obtained the name of the victims thanks to Ata. Using that as, as, a, as a foundation, I tell Hiro whose name she, we should give Kokuri. The name is probably Masaki, Masaki Kyohara. Kokuri seems to accept this answer. Is he responding to us? Kokuri stays still for a moment. I guess he really is Kyohara. Assuming the science teacher who was investigating Fox Takara was the victim of the Lakers incident, and that the mushrooms and the culprits behind the incident were hooligans. It all aligns with Kokuri's fixations. Therefore, the victim of the incident, Kyohara, is the natural choice for the Kokuri. Looks like the right choice. Kokuri looks at us in silence. Why is that question just now? 
What does he want us to do? No idea. I feel like he's testing us right now. Kokuri suddenly lets out a shriek. Oh wow. He's masked and falls off, revealing a hideous decaying face. I feel dizzy. My arm's hurting really bad. Shit. It's messing with my arm now. Oh no, this is bad. It's totally gonna kill us. We have no idea what Kokuri's real intention is. We're gonna be killed at this rate. What should we do? Who? Forest. Polygon. Does he want us to give him a name again? I got a feeling that a wrong answer here is going to get us killed. You need to really think this over. Who's the worst hooligan? The worst hooligan? Mashita. The Yakuza, the police. Uh, the worst hooligan would be student K, right? The delinquents have been dealt with, in a way. Kakuta is dead. It would be student K. Is either this or Kakuta? We try to recall the hooligans who linked to the fox lacquer inside a petri dish. Having made a decision, we declare our answer together. Kokuri, the one you hate is... Student K. Kokuri breaths become more shallow. He seems satisfied with that answer. Oh, good. I knew it. Assuming Kokuri is Kyohara, he lost his family to a bunch of delinquents in the Lake Has incident. The culprits were under the influence of Fox Lakata, which was sold by Student K. Making things worse, Student K wa wasn't arrested. It's basically the roof cause of all of Kokuri's problems. What? Kokuri lets out a shri- a uh, iria howl. What do you want now? Then he slowly vanishes into thin air. Okay. In a flash, the paint disappeared as quickly as it came. The strange objects covering my head and arm have also disappeared. Is it over? <laughs> What's that sound? Upon hearing that eerie scream, I've started to feel dizzy. Is Kokuri attacking us again, Yashiki? What is happening? Kokuri should have disappeared. Why is he here again? Is he smiling? Or is he suffering? My dizziness is getting worse. What's wrong, Yashiki? Hiro's scream sounds so distant. Oh, that's fast. My consciousness is fading as a curtain of darkness descends upon me. <laughs> right. These voices. It is the departed. I hear a sound. The same disgusting sound as before. Is 
Kokori being devoured. But why? Oh. But you resisted fate, stood against fear. Now, I am convinced. You are my real husband. Take a look. Oh god. Before my eyes, the Apollo transforms. The head splits open, revealing their new form, one even more hideous than the last. Three souls combine, think off my old clothes, and put on new clothes. I want to be beautiful, more beautiful than the others. We will exchange vows later. Please wait, dear husband. Oh, that's... oh, oh god. Um... Shit. I panicked. <laughs> um... That was something. Wasn't it? Wow. Like, ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, it's gonna be okay. Ah. I'm streaking with a massive headache and my feet falter beneath me. What in the world is happening? Oh, I still have a chance of seeing it. What is that thing? The lights are supposed to be off, yet it emits a dim, a dim light. A red light. Ugh. Hero has collapsed to the ground. While Hero was lost consciousness, he arms any physical injuries that I can find. Hey Hero, are you okay? I grab Hero by the shoulders and give a firm shake. Mm. Yashiki. I help Hero off the floor. Thank you. What is that light? What is Mr. Kokori doing? I have no idea. Hiro, can you recall anything? Me? Uh, I can't remember a thing. I lost consciousness the moment Mr. Kokori started behaving oddly. That reminds me, what is Mr. Kokori? He's not here. Did you do something to him? No. The one who killed Mr. Kokri is... <laughs> Decided with a witness when I was on the brink of fainting. They departed the vault of Mr. Kokri. And then their body underwent a horrible transformation. Don't show it again. What's wrong? It's nothing. I don't really know anything either. I'm still coming to my senses too. I doubt that telling Hero about what that bizarre scene is going to clear anything up. As we told it informally, maybe Asoka can give us me can give me some answers. Let's go, Hero. What of us leave the science room? Can we even Or even how is red now? This is going on over the entirety of the old building. Let's head back to the new building before anything else bad happens. Well, I can't fast travel.
Everything's red. I can feel someone's gaze on me. I'm getting deja vu for some reason. You're... Better? A few more dollars standing in the darkness. A damaged face has been fixed. How can that be? Why did her appearance change in addition to the departed? Hmm? Her words are clearer than before. Kokori's resentment still lingers. Kokori not forgive those possessed by demons. Return red demons where they belong. If you know the disappears into the darkness. Kokori's resentment is still lingering. I can't immediately refute that. If Mr. Kokori has been involved by the departed before his soul was saved, perhaps the lingering resentment will still bury his fangs at living beings. If that's true, then his target is still. Hey, Ashki. Huh? What? Huh? What? What? Why did you just stop all of a sudden? The new building is just up ahead. Okay. There's something. There's still something I can do to save Mr. Kokuri. I wonder what she, mean, she means by return the red demons to where they belong. We we'll return to the grounds of the shrine once again. Hey, why have you come here? I have something to tell Mr. Kokuri. Huh? Just wait here, hero. I head towards the, sh the inner area of the grounds by myself. Mr. Kokuri, I mean Masaki Kyohara's corpse is resting here. A man whose life and family were ruined by the fox Sakara. To add insult to mortal injury, these mushrooms are growing on his corpse, as if mocking his strategy. Return the red demons to where they belong. If red demons are referring to fox Sakara, then there is no other place they belong more than right here. Take a look at this, Kyohara. I take the creepy petri dish from my bag. And then I throw it into the nearby bush. That should be enough, right? What'd you do? I threw out the petri dish. Huh? But why? Fox Lakara wasn't supposed to be taken outside this forest. This is what Mr. Kokuri wants. But Fox Lakari is such an amazing plant. If we just research it, we might be able to develop new med. Spirits don't really accept that kind of nuance. Mr. Koko reveals everyone who takes Fox Lakara from the forest as hooligans. Know how all these hooligans met their ends, right? If you're prepared for the potential consequences, it's all yours. Bah. Hero's complexion turns a pale, paler shade of white. With her crippling fear of spirits, that should give her more than enough reason to change her mind. Fine, fine, I get it. Damn it, that's such a massive disappointment. I've been thinking about getting those mushrooms back to the lab ever since I found them. You heard that, Kyohara? I'll report your case to the cops once everything's settled. So you should just rest peacefully until then. Was that enough? How do I leave again? Oh. It's too red. I want to see if I would be able to save the game with the infirmary. No way. 
I don't know this this. Doors are flashing, the piano is playing. What have thought the paranormal phenomena will occur in the new building as well? It's the first time I've witnessed the spirits operating as strongly and brazenly as this. Not how many special building as also. Hurry up, Yashki. Special building is as peaceful as ever. The lights haven't turned red like the ones in the other buildings. Ah, we should be safe for now. What's that phenomenon anyway? I got an idea, though it's just a hunch. Both the female doll and Konohara Academy changed once the departed transformed. That can't be mere coincidence. Oh, that's right. You gotta check out the floppy disk before going to Yasoka. We don't know what Mr. Kokuri is gone is it's gone for good, so we like to gather all the info we can just in case. You have a point. We do still have some unsolved mysteries regarding Mr. Kokuri. Affirmation that the doll also said his resentment is still lingering. And if that's true, our lives will be at risk unless the resentment has been placated. All the stuff concerning the departed and the red lights are certainly worrisome. But we better focus on Mr. Kokuri as, as the imminent trap. Got it. Let's go to the faculty room. Can I say first? The faculty room is empty at the time of night. I need to find the laptop quickly. It's right there. Several teacher's desks are lined up here. Everything's clean and tidy. Pat Sakamoto is a big part of that, given her meticulous personality. Sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. There's a laptop on the desk. We can check the data on the floppy with this. You do the work, Hiro. This is my cup of tea. Alright, I got it. Hiro turns on the laptop. And then inserts the floppy disk. I see. They're documents from 10 years ago. These files predate the operating system with a GU GUI. Let's go back to the days of command lines. These files themselves should be still be readable by modern word processing software, I hope. Hiro may as well be speaking a foreign language. I don't understand a thing they said. After a while, some text finally appears on the screen. This is... I'm writing this here just in case. I summoned K to the forest. K, it's Mitsuru Kuromine. He's a hooligan. He'll probably bring his gang of thugs with him. So I've decided to bring my hunting rifle. Become a demon. Both physically and mentally. The next fox demon of this cursed forest. I'll terrorize them and kill every single one of them. Even if I die, I sacrifice my soul. I shall destroy my enemies. Is this pretty much a farewell note? And this mask kick your heart person. It's probably on Mr. Co Mr. Kokuri. Adding Kyohara's notes to the other information we have thus far, we can see the whole his whole story. Ten years ago. Yohara's wife and child were murdered by delinquents at a The boys were junkies, addicted to Fox Takara. And the one who sold them was Hooligan K. K was Kuromine, a delinquent from Konohara Academy. After learning his identity, Kyohara summoned Kurohime and his friends to the forest with the intention of getting revenge. And at that moment, he became the fox demon of the cursed forest. Wearing white clothing, com complete with a fox mask, he covered how Mr. Kokuri looked. He probably saw something of himself in the spirits who killed hooligans that disgraced the shrine. However, he never got his revenge. His revenge. Kuromine and his friends killed him, 
and buried him in the forest. That skeletal corpse was Kyohara. His resentment still lingered, lingered on even after his death. Thus, his regret became a spirit. Oddly enough, a spirit that looked like Mr. Kokiri, Kokuri. And that is how the, his revenge began claiming hooligans addicted to Fox Takara. One of them being Kakuta. I guess we learned enough. Let's support this to Yasuok and the others at the infirmary. We should share the information we have about Mr. Kokuri with the others. They should be waiting for it. Now come back here too. Mind telling us what happened out there? We tell them all the events that have happened up to this point. Including the moments when they departed the bar Mr. Kokuri and transformed. A sign that only I could see. A sign they wished was merely a hallucination. What the? A spirit transformed after devouring another spirit? Never heard of such a thing before. What a monster. It doesn't make any sense. Don't scare me like that. The three mark bearers all take this news differently. Shocked and confused. Honestly, I feel all their emotions. Or have this transformation made them stronger? I explained the red lights from earlier. Does that mean things have taken a turn to the worse? Most likely. I wonder what they're planning next now that the game powered and transformed. More terrifying things may be in store, in, in store ahead. Awful. A heavy silence falls over the infirmary. The reporter has grown stronger, there is nothing we can do about it. Our sense of fear grows alongside the sense of powerlessness that we felt. The phone on the desk is ringing. Should answer it. Hello? Sma Smaru Hashi. I charged Kakuta's phone. That's fast. Have you checked what's on it? Of course. I'll tell you what it says now, so you better take notes. I'm gonna take your notes. I prepared to write down the contents of Kakuta's phone as Smaru Hashi relays it to me. There is a series of messages from MK. MK had entrusted Kakuta to manage the fox Lakara in the forest. But when the secret was about to be exposed, he told Kakuta to dispose of them. He threatened to tell the world about Kakuta's assault case if Kakuta betrayed him. Kakuta reluctant reluctantly agreed to help. MK didn't send any messages after two weeks, until today after school, when Kakuta got two new messages from him. However, the text was too garbled to decipher. Hmm. MK. I recall the time I saw Kakuta in the storage room. I was wondering something while looking at his phone. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else I'll be killed. MK. It's pretty clear he was acting under MK's direction. Kakuta is a pretty messed up kid for someone who is a disciplinary committee member. Kakuta didn't have anything to do with the Lake Cass incident. However, he got himself mixed up with Fox Lakata because of MK's blackmail. That's how he met, he met his end. 
Mr. Kokori, Yohara won't forgive anyone who's addicted to Fox Takara. Thanks, Marohashi. I was just repaying my debts that caused her trouble before, alright? I'm hanging up now. Say hi to Miss Yasuoka for me. Must I go, right? What did she say? Tell the others everything Marohashi told me. Hey, MK. It's in that a person named K mentioned in the Lake Cast Mother case. I do. In Kyohara's final notes, K's full name was Mitsuru Kurohime, Kuromine, which means that K from Lake Cast case was as the initials MK. It's a pretty likely fit for him to also be MK, who was messaging Kakuta. Kuromine continued to gather Fox Takara secretly, even after the Lake Cast incident. He exploited Kakuta's weakness and had him washed over his crops. With a frown, Master. I knew it. I know Mitsuru Kuromine. That jogged my memory. So. Is so a criminal who arrested in the past? No, the opposite. Mitsuru Kuromine is a cop. Oh, he's a career bureaucrat in the Metropolitan Police Department. His pops in the top brass. So he joined the cops because everyone expected he just followed the pop's his pop's footsteps. Wait a minute. He wasn't prosecuted. Rukunomino was still a suspect in Lake Cass case. He's still selling Fox Takata. Is it possible that a fiend like that can still be a cop? Cops are just people. These saints and fiends in every group of there are saints of fiend and fiends in every group of people. Doctors, teachers, military, cops. And like I said earlier, his dad is top brass. Sweeping a case like this under the hug would take some efforts. But his boss was so high up, he could definitely take, take care of it. Are you serious? So he escaped punishment for late cast and he's blackmailing students to do his dirty work even now. What a shameless comeback. That is exactly the kind of guy Kuromine is. A selfish asshole who stoops to anything so long as it gave him the slightest benefit. In addition, Kyohara's spirit is unable to find peace through that miscreant. How unforgivable. Is there anything more we can do, Master? Nope. It's out of our hands. No matter what evidence we find, we'll never be able to take him to trial. Why do you mean by that? Karamin is already dead. What? Oh. I remember reading about it in the newspaper about a half a half a month ago. He died while relaxing at the lake. Accidental death, they say. And that lake he was relaxing at. You guessed. Lake S. What a coincidence. Or maybe it wasn't a coincidence at all. For an arrogant entitled man with power like Kuromine. The deceased must have seemed as powerless as the living. To him, a spirits were just another made-up construct with morals or digni dignity that he could disregard. That's why he could kill so easily. But for those like us, we know the grudges of the dead are not just ghost stories. The deceased are not powerless. That concludes our investigation for the night. Not everything is cleared up. There are some mysteries that is, remains unsolved. There is no one left who can resolve those mysteries. Both Kakuta and Kuromini are dead. I start getting ready to leave school though. Still feeling uneasy for some reason. I come back, Kashki. Did you lock the door? Yeah. Do they force you to work as a janitor too? They put way too much effort into this. Hey, we can't leave, let people loiter inside the school, but the number of victims is going to increase. As soon as the words leave my mouth, I feel how empty they are. 
Hero Master, the only ones in the infirmary that is not signing of Yasuoka. Where is she? Call a taxi and send her home. I mean, this is usually bedtime for Gizas, right? She's way too energetic for her age. He really rude, you know that? If I hear you being charged with harassment, I'm totally going to believe you're guilty. Never harass anyone in my life. Shall we head home now too? I'll drive you both to the stations, thanks. Hmm. Having lost both his wife and child in a brutal incident, so no 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 no. Okay. Masaki Kyohara and Mitsuru Kuromine has been added to the character file. After checking whether or not the door is locked, we leave the special building. And then we head to the main gate. For now, there is nothing we can really do about the red lights in the school. If it's really a spirit doing, everything should be back to normal once the sun rises. By the way, Yashki, give me back my paper bag. You can keep it if you like it so much, though. You can take it. I wouldn't want such a dangerous thing anyway. Take the gun from the paper bag and hand it back. Just hand the paper bag, you idiot. What in the world are you doing now? I just want to go home already. We're just leaving. My car slowly leaves the school and heads towards Zem Tower Station. It should be able to catch the last train. Say, Yashki. Master murmurs in the passenger seat, eyes fixed on the scenery outside. I glance at him, interactively telling him to continue. He must be tired, his, comple his complexion looks dark and unusual. Kakta went to the fox forest this evening. He got another from NK. For a minute. Yeah, he did. Don't you find that weird? Now that he mentions it, something about that doesn't feel right. The thoughts got stuck in my mind. What's wrong with it? Kuramine is dead. Uh, Kuromine orders the message itself. So I picked up on it too, huh? Of course. Kuromine died half a month ago. It's impossible that he's the one that sent that message. So there's a chance that MK is in Kuromine. Previous messages before Kuromine's death must be from him. But the messages he got today were strange. Even the fact that the text was garbled. In the first place, how could Kakta even read that message when it was garbled? Everything is just so confusing. Hey! Hiro, sitting in the back seat, cuts in. Can you give it a rest already? This case is old. I feel sorry for Kakta, but what's done is done. But... Let's be grateful that we managed to survive tonight. Just focus on what you have to do, or else you go insane. Ah, hero. My job is dissecting animals, you see? There are times when if I feel depressed after thinking about the value of life and the animals I had to kill. I can't even pretend that all of the testing I've done is for the pursuit of science and the betterment of society. I'm not good at fooling people. <laughs> I take a glance at the rear view mirror. Her smile looks somewhat self depreciated the Brickatine. Hmm. Do you know why I can continue doing my job? 
because I realized that just how life works and I gotta do what I need to do. We're not gods, we're not rulers. We can save everyone. We can just change the world. That's a good point. Good. You tend to push yourself too hard when it comes to this stuff, you know? I drop my stern hero off the tower station. Then I drive on through the night, heading towards Kujo Mansion. Do do do, this chapter never ends. Do do do, this chapter never ends. And another phone call, and another phone call, and another phone call, and another phone call. <laughs> As I already have a dimension, the phone rings. I can't even relax. Who's calling this later night? Hello? It's Kinokawa. Sorry for calling so late. What's wrong? Um, I can't stop thinking about Mr. Kokuri's case. Are you alright? I survived at least. Okakuta's dead. Huh? The Karate Man? Yeah, I failed again. I shared the night's events with Michiho. I realized that I shouldn't talk about it with the students, even though she's trying to help me. However, my mouth starts going before I can think about it, and it'd be more trouble to stop talking once I start it. Maybe I'm just too exhausted to care. Oh, I see. I get why you're blaming yourself, but it's not your fault, it's the departed. You need to put a stop to the departed quickly. We'll help you figure out who it is. Why? Why are you still helping me after everything terrible go you've gone through? Is it really just curiosity? At first, yeah. But now? I'm doing this because I don't want to die. You saved our lives, and you understand your curse. That made both of us happy, but because we didn't think we ever have the guts to tell anyone about it again. Michiho. Remember this, Mr. Yashiki. You're not just a teacher of both him and I. You're a precious teacher. Me? The precious teacher? Never expected anyone to call me that when I've been told I have to feel as a temporary teacher. I should feel some kind of pride over it. But it triggered a memory of something Mashita told me. What you should do is start looking at everyone around you as potential suspects. Are you listening, Mr. Yashiki? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was pissing out a, a little bit. Guess I'm just exhausted from tonight. Well, that's natural. Stop for taking your time. Have some rest. Good night. Suspect everyone, huh? That's tough to do. The night goes on, yet I can't bring myself to go to sleep. I'm afraid to close my eyes. Not afraid to even turn off the lights. My eyes flit over to the window to display the moonlight outside, triggering a memory from an earlier night. The departed was roaming about with a new body. I recall what I said, and now I'm convinced that you are my real husband. All these incidents must have been some sort of test to see if us words of being their husbands. And it seems like those tests have ended tonight. The departed has acknowledged me as their real husband. The ending that the departed desires. I feel like the day is fast approaching, and I'll be asked to exchange vows at the school grounds, all eating red. Achievement.
There we go. Took a while.